welcome to Destiny Digest, folks. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. We have a panel for PvP, focused not only on the Into the Light update, but also on the uh, future of PvP in the final shape. Uh, with us today, we have Ascendant Nomad, and uh, Angelica for the win, and Stadia Time, and we'll have Ill Physics here in just a little bit. Uh, before we dive into the conversation, why don't we have you guys go around the cube and, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about yourselves, what you do in the community, and where people can find you, uh, starting with Ascendant Nomad. Hello, everybody. My name is Ascendant Nomad, and they call me the Crucible Doctor because I called myself the Crucible Doctor <laughs> once upon a time when I made videos helping people get better at PvP. That, I think, has been my main reason why people actually know me. Um, aside from making the odd tier list or two, that tends to do rather well on YouTube. Um, but yeah, that's what I do. I, you can find me on Twitch or YouTube or X, Twitter, whatever the F it's called now. It's Twitter. Um, Twitter, sure. The X um, is silent. Yeah. <laughs> I had to send a nomad everywhere. Uh, Angelica for the win. Why, what about you? My name's Angelica. Uh, I'm your local PvE gremlin. Uh, I usually just sit in GMs. That's, that's about it. Um, yeah. Occasionally a little bit of PvP sprinkled in, but for the most part... GMs, a lot of GMs. Heck yeah. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash AngelicaFTW or Twitter slash X, silent X, um, at AngelicaFTW as well. All right. And Stadia Time, rounding out the, the two new folks. Who oh, hello. The show. Well, my name's Stadia Time. I'm one of the only people who ever survived the death of Stadia. Uh, <laughs> I think you're more. Started. I think you're more famous than uh, Stadia now. <laughs> oh yeah, I think so. Oh, the poor thing. Uh, but yeah, I started Destiny Two on Stadia, and then I got good through meeting Fallout. You know what I mean? All that good stuff. And uh, I am, I, I, I'm an idiot, but I'm a functional idiot who likes to do stupid stuff in Destiny Two, like using gyro support on Joy Cons to control the game, or uh, or letting my chat control certain stuff uh, as I go through certain missions. I mostly do PvP. But I'm getting into a lot more PVE stuff lately because I'm getting bullied to do it. So, you know, <laughs> you can uh, you can find my stuff on Twitch under the same name Stadia Time or uh, Twitter as well. Welcome and thank you guys so much for taking the time to to do this today. Um, let's start off. We've had a lot of changes to PVP uh, over the past season. The season has been incredibly long. Um, We've had a lot of changes to PvE as well. That just changes abound everywhere. Um, how are you guys feeling about the current sandbox in PvP? How are you guys feeling um, about uh, not only the abilities, but the weapon choices uh, that people are, are making and um, some of the special uh, economy? Whoever wants to hop in, feel free. I'll, I'll hop in. Um... I think generally the sandbox, with the exception of a couple of outliers in certain playlists and certain times of times of the season, it's pretty diverse. I'm seeing a lot of everything. I don't know about you guys, time and, and I, I would I have no generally idea. agree with that. Um, I've been seeing obviously a whole lot less special, which is something yeah. that I have been very much enjoying. I, 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 I like the fact that you have to use primary ammo or team shot with your teammates in order to generate special to be able to use it. There's something about that that just feels like the uh, the matches flow a bit better than it was before. Everything was just special ammo right from the get-go. Mm -hmm. But um, what do the rest of you think? I would agree with that, but I also feel like a lot of us are confused about what to use in general. Um. Mm -hmm. As someone who just recently came back to PvP, I, I think I stopped playing for almost a year, maybe a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I didn't, I don't know what to use. <laughs> so I've been swapping from SMGs to pulses to hand cannons, which I do, I do love being able to just play with pretty much anything. 
but the ability spam kind of just kills that. Okay, I'm gonna dedicate the next video I make to you, and I'm gonna dedicate it to because <laughs> <and> Hall- <laughs> uh, well, I'm I'm, ma- I'm making a state of PvP video right now, so I'm mm-hmm. I, I so, just from from what I'm my, what I've experienced it it feels like because because of the changes in special ammo it feels like primaries you know because so much of Crucible was special ammo like Stadia was saying we forgot how to use our primaries and it's very obvious when you get into a gunfight now especially with the change to health and and the the difference between the body shot and the crit shot ratio the crit ratio mm-hmm. um like there's a lot of fights a lot of more fights than i care to admit that i should shouldn't win but i do because people can't aim it's Which, it's that simple i agree i agree with that um it took me i would say a solid month and a half to feel comfortable on a hand cannon again cuz i was just used to running around with a shotgun you could just just w key everything um, and right now, I definitely feel better after about a month, but at first, I just did not feel good. The first couple games a day felt just, I was just being pummeled every single game. Um, of course, I'm a casual when it comes to PvP. I'm not a great player, um, but I do enjoy it occasionally. I've been hopping into PvP lately, and... Mainly just to get the catalyst done. That's that's been what I've been calling eating my vegetables. Trying to get the catalyst done for Mida and for Sir's regime. And it feels like I am able to do a lot more damage and get away with a lot more. And that's not something that sh- should be true. <laughs> I feel like... Um, you say get away with a lot more what do you mean like when you're in your 1v1 engagements it means he's not getting deleted by special every single time he steps up yeah all right (laughs) that's what you like to hear (laughs) yeah i'm not i'm not getting deleted it it just feels like i'm it, it feels like i'm playing evenly with with my matches and i don't know if that's like uh the fire team matchmaking or if that's just my bracket but it feels like everything is even Mm -hmm. everybody's kind of making the same mistakes uh the Surus regime uh uh the vigilance wing and my mita have been hitting and i haven't really felt like i was um not not challenged because it is it is still a challenge to win my engagements, but I feel like I'm more capable of staying alive after engagements and kind of pushing that number up. Yeah, I mean, I sense. certainly enjoy not having to worry about going around every single corner and then being instant domed by a sniper rifle or something. So you yeah. can actually feel like you can take your primary uh, engagements on the go. Um, by the way, Tony is currently in the audience there. If you want to pull heard. Up. Yep, got you. I guess I'm the one that is doubled. So I'm trying to figure that out, too. Um, I will get Tony in here real quick, like. My apologies, gang. Oh, by the way, Angelica, quick question. You said that um, you, you brought up ability spam. And I wonder if the Bungie took a lot of time to try and reduce how much ability spam people can do. So I was curious, like, what kind of abilities you see in PvP in your experience spammed around a lot, and whether or not, like, you guys think that's because there's less special ammo. People are substituting special ammo now for more potent abilities, I guess, or or, or higher ability spam. I see I a lot of that. strand and a lot of stasis. Um, okay. Being able to stop your opponent from moving, suspending them, freezing them is a huge advantage. Um, generally speaking, I do see it a lot in trials. Um, I've been playing a lot of trials recently. And it <laughs> there's ways to combat it. You can definitely backpedal players. You can usually tell when someone's going to rush towards you. right? Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes, I don't know if it's just the way our mods are build crafting is really really strong in the game and um i do feel like sometimes even though we're supposed to have a limitation on how much we can use our abilities i feel like i just see them a lot more than i did before sometimes so i don't know if maybe that is a product of 
less special or mm -hmm. if it's i don't know i'm not sure but i guess it's uh i mean i i don't know that much about pvp in general i just play it and i hope for the best no, it's totally okay. I mean, it's uh, Strand is definitely the the hunter slam is like one of the main things that I see very frequently going around everywhere, and that thing is incredibly powerful. Guilty, I use stasis a lot. I love Strand. I love a uh, Shadebinder Warlock is like my main for such a long time. Just such a stop shaking your head. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt Stadia. <laughs> But you, but this is the you said I was I was about to just take the, I love take the mic it. for I a love second it so there. Much, dude, it's basically a fourth <laughs> weapon. All right, you got your primary, you got your secondary, you got your heavy, then you got your like pocket conditional finality. I love it, dude. I love it. Welcome, welcome everybody to the stream where Stadia Time says some shit and Tony just just <laughs> shakes his head. <laughs> couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe we were talking about Strand Hunter suspension first before we talk about Shade Binder. Okay, well, so it was, I'm gonna let you finish though. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you finish. I'm gonna let you finish. First, you know, I'm trying to put myself on the side. I want to say. So, Tony, we were just talking about. Um, welcome, welcome to uh, the show. Thank you Thank so you much for, for hopping in. Um, yep, yep. We were just Apologies talking the about delay. the current. We were just talking about the current state of PvP. What we were enjoying about it. What we do not. What we don't like. Uh, what What are some of your thoughts? Um. I definitely I agree with Angelica. Uh, I came in with her talking about uh, ability spam. I agree only you know to a degree. Um, a little bit of like strand, uh, most definitely. Um, with uh, is is it arcane needle on hunter as well, or is it like threaded needle or something like that? But either way, the melee um, uh, is it is it you just pretty much like I feel like you always have that up in most engagements. Um, it, it's it, it tracks much better. That can we get some sort of buff for withering blade if we if we got this for <laughs> for for strand hunter? I don't know. Uh, Shade binder is the most oppressive thing in the game as far as abilities like it oh, and is, i swear to god people, and, and don't, uh, people don't realize it That's they, the they don't they, they it's don't. still slept on how is it still slept on how i don't is understand it it's Let's got like a 2.7 percent usage in trials it literally it's wins crazy. you engagements that you otherwise would have lost if you weren't on shade i binder. cannot it's like so those good. shade binder is that subclass that i have to take absolutely seriously when i see it because seven percent means that seven those seven percent just like 1. if 7. I see a glaive user, 0.7, you know, like, yeah. uh, just if I see a glaive user, you guys know where I'm going with it. You know what I'm saying? Those people are serious. <laughs> Those user, people are yeah. criminals. Glaive users you know actually terrify me. Every single time I run into them, I'm like, I, I want to go. Most definitely. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of, you know, elitism in the chat. So I like to advocate for the common <laughs> PB player. <laughs> Thinking is hard. Mm -hmm. Leave us alone. <laughs> oh my goodness but either way to get back to the point um you know like i don't think that ability spam is overwhelming across you know all subclasses across the entire crucible i do think that there are certain outliers most definitely thank goodness that we have you know only a 0.7 percent of shade binders so you know i've always said and you know i'm sure a lot of folks can mirror what i'm saying with this is you know i love the abilities i love the special weapons i love destiny as a whole and that whole sandbox that whole economy um that we've had that define uh what makes destiny 2 pvp um if something is super oppressive i just don't want to see it all the time that, that's all mm -hmm. you know so if it's 0.7 sure. percent okay all right cool you know what i'm saying it's frustrating when it happens but i ain't gonna get been out of shape you know for 0.7 percent right mm -hmm. um uh, otherwise, as far as like the crucible, it really is just like um, like passive play and people's ability to disengage too frequently. Um, I see mm -hmm. that so incredibly often, and it makes my games absolutely unbearable sometimes. Um, and I see it more in skill based matchmaking because people that Bungie thinks are around my level, or you know, like or I'm at their level. I'm not saying I'm better or worse. I'm just simply saying my skill based oh, matchmaking bracket. I'm you know what I'm saying, man. <laughs> we, know, we know what you mean. <laughs> I'm just simply saying people be like people are able to disengage uh you know too easily uh from fights. I feel like people are able to play too defensively. And these these like how long? Two and a half years of these overshield barricades? Like, come on! Yeah, yeah. Like, please, Lord have mercy, case, give us do some you reprieve. Think the uh, increase to the health pool was actually a drawback or like a downside for, to PvP because of the more primary engagements you have to go into. 
Because if no. you're finding more people like no. disengaging because you can't actually kill them fast enough and everything like that, because of I just think people are literally disengaging on like a first headshot. I think oh, okay. I think people are like feel comfortable back like backtracking because mm -hmm. they have defensive capabilities that trump aggressive capabilities in this game right now for PvP. Fair. Um, so I'm not I'm not I'm just stating my experience. I'm not proposing any solutions or or well, I will say please for the love of God let's please address these overshield barricades please for the love of God. Oh, I'm so fucking tired of it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't and know if we're supposed tight. to be cut because and, bu and bubble tight. You can't, you can't have you can't have the best you know, Sam Supers for the game modes that we have available. And on top of that, you got the best like neutral game kit as well. You know, you can't mm -hmm. have those two together. I don't get that on Arc Strider. <laughs> I don't get that on Arc Strider, you know? And I'm not necessarily saying that we can't have that as well, but we can't have it for two and a half years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, mean, I think I think this one fundamentally comes down to the fact that they can't seem to separate the cooldown timer for the supers between PvE and PvP. If something's a tier five mm. super in PvP, it mm. has to be a tier five super in PvE. Because mm. if they were able to separate that, I have to, I have to think Bubble would have been put straight to tier one. Did they ever mention the that they cooldown. literally weren't able to, or is no, just they, I, haven't. I, I don't they don't want they to? I think they don't want to because Got they it. said they want the experience between PvE and PvP to feel somewhat to consistent. Yeah, okay, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And supers is one of those ones that they, yeah, yeah, they they put in that bracket. Agreed. Which is strange because you can get your supers so quickly in PvE these days with yeah, any that doesn't number make of sense. builds. Or, so so it, I do feel like it's one of those, yeah, you can have this, but you know there has to be an appropriate penalty for this. I run 100 intellect in Trials. I run like 20 intellect in PvE because super abilities, like you get them so quickly. Mm -hmm. Two, three minutes within a busy activity. Like you really can just get them. And it's damage As soon as you need them, yeah. It's kind of a trash stat on that stat block. I never put in for them w going into raids or anything like that. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. I think all of, in PvE, all of my builds, I think, are anywhere between 20 and 40 for intellect. Mm -hmm. And that's usually just because that's what was on my armor. It's mm -hmm. not because I chose it. If I could, it'd probably be at zero. Honestly, it's just mm -hmm. not a necessary tier. Mm. Um, especially in higher end activities where you do a lot of damage using rockets, GLs, or LMGs. So, 100%. what do you guys feel like outside of abilities, outside of getting your super back faster and like the engagements? What, where do you see improvement in the crucible? Where do you see, um, what would you like to change in this current sandbox? Oh. Hmm. For me personally, um, I, I really don't think there's, there, there's really just not so much that frustrates me with the sandbox. I think they've done a great job. I think they've done a great job of uh, mixing stuff up on a, on a relatively frequent basis. Um, I don't think that they necessarily need to make tools for aggression more prominent or stronger. Mm -hmm. I just think that they need to tone down some, I know, you know, relatively speaking, if they end up toning down some of the defensive, you know, measures, then of course that by default brings up aggressive, you know, measures or whatnot. But I really just don't think they need to outright buff anything aggressively, you know, for yeah. the sake of buffing aggression. I think that sure. they just need to, they need to tone down, you know what I'm saying? Like the bubble, the, um, they need to tone down uh, uh, Overshield. the overshields. Lord have mercy, please, for the love of God. Please yeah. just tone PvP, those down. It, like I it would be like so it much better if that right there, in particular, gets toned down. Yeah. Um, and I've said it a couple of different times. You know, okay, maybe don't give it to the entire team. Okay, mm -hmm. make it so that you don't instantly get an overshield off of popping it, so that yeah. there's some actual downside. Okay, you got a whole barricade, right? But I can still push it. You know what I'm saying? If I do it fast enough, and still there's a risk of that barricade like touching my toenail and I'm absolute while they're absolute, yeah, you know? 99.9% .9 of your health gone for touching a barricade with for your pinky toe. It's crazy, <laughs> yeah. crazy, crazy. But I've already spoken about barricades, but um, you know, the overshields, you know, if we're like just completely separated from the barricades themselves, the overshields, um, and uh, if we could just pull those back just a little bit at the very least, um, taking it off of the entire team and just giving it to the Titan that uh, that popped it, and on top of that, just don't make it like an instant overshield, um, mm -hmm. you know, or don't like, do you get your health back or is it just the instant overshield off of popping that barricade? 
You get the health and the, the, the shield. Over shield is, uh, unless you have like alpha loopy to get a health bump. Got you. Just yeah. making sure. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I feel like just at the very least, you know, to appease, just take it off the entire team so that you can't apply it mm -hmm. to the entire team. Um, and let's just go from there. But um, I think that if some of that stuff, like psychologically, the defensive measures are toned down, people will uh just intrinsically be a little bit more aggressive or at the very least commit to more fights because people need to commit uh to fights there need to be a, there needs to be an incentive to do so um yeah yeah those really? overshield builds have gotten a hell of a lot more powerful ever since the primary ammo weapons essentially got like the main yeah. focus in the mm -hmm. engagements now now if you have an overshield and you're using primary against primary it's not like a guaranteed loss but it is it really puts you at a massive disadvantage I, most uh, yeah. definitely 100%. Go ahead, Senator. Yeah, the, the, I was just going to say, just the, the the fact that we've all locked in on just this one thing and only this one thing just shows that there isn't a whole lot they need to still do. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing, the biggest thing on my head, the biggest question mark is this 111 system with the special ammo. It's very TBD as to whether or not it's going to work if we're going to have more special ammo. By the way, snipers are dead completely with the new special ammo mm. changes mm. i would like mm. to see some return to that in the sense see, that i would like to see a bit more diversity in the specials use that this not just what was it 75 percent conditional finality or whatever they said the in the twi in the twid on that note make shotguns more consistent please and thank you um but are people not that confident with their sniper shots anymore is that what happened i think i think people are f there's more Excuse of me. a penalty to miss a, sh uh, a sniper exactly which i think is and, totally fair given the fact yeah. that it scan anywhere on the map, instant kill yeah. headshot. And also, the flinch plug. is really high. A lot of weapons have things like explosive right now, um, mm -hmm. especially the new weapons we're pulling. If you look at Luna, if you look at pretty much any, uh, what is yeah. the, I, I would say almost any hand cannon or scout that you see in, in Crucible, like for the main mm -hmm. part, you're going to see some kind of explosive. I mean, even things like Firefly, like you, you start seeing that a lot. Um, so yeah, there is going to be a bigger punishment for running snipers. They are kind of dead. I I don't really see them. I really don't, um, especially and, in and trials. And some would say good riddance. I mean, I, I certainly did not enjoy three snipers. Yeah. Nobody enjoys that no, at all. No. Um, but also, like for, from my perspective, I was I was just in Dubai recently for a family thing, and I brought my PlayStation because, of course, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and the meta on console is so vastly different to what we see on PC. Like mm -hmm. there aren't a lot of one twenties. It's basically just Lunas Hal because Lunas Hal's the precision <laughs> frame archetype feels incredible on a controller. Yep, one hundred percent. It feels like legal yep. aimbot and certain devices which cannot be named for legal reasons. I'm amazed that they gave it the same visual recoil shot pattern as a 180 as a 140. I mean, that's that that's just an after effect of when they were 180s yeah. and then 150s and then 140s, right? I like, never got a chance a... to enjoy the game when that was a thing. So when I saw that they, that got brought back and I started shooting this thing, I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah it's, weird. Me, it's really weird. Yeah. It is, it is weird. It definitely it's seems like a part of it. Yeah, and it seems like it's part a strong part of its identity as well. So Yeah. But the, like going back to the console matter, like the passive meta isn't nearly as prominent, I don't think, as as it is on PC. Like there's far less 120s, there's far less uh, high impact pulse rifles. There's a lot of there's a lot of SMGs and peacekeepers. I think that's still mm. pretty strong, especially against console players that that do not know how to move, uh, which is a significant portion of them. Sorry, um, I think there's a lot of spray and pray on console, is what you're saying. Yeah, uh, auto rifles, SMGs, just just pray, just hope. How, it yeah. something. how do you think I've been getting my? How do you think I've been getting my catalyst skills? <laughs> just mm -hmm. <laughs> straight up, <laughs> bye, and leave it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying, if you have a ma mask of backrest build on a console and you're not dropping Sorry. 50 bombs in in open skill lobbies, yeah, you're the problem. <laughs> oh, I see. That's like a, a you know a big portion as a lot of people I feel like on console use ten or below sensitivity. Um, yeah, especially when you can have abilities that move so fast. Which that's like literally the only reason I swapped a mouse and keyboard and started learning. <laughs> I was on twenty sensitivity with a one point five ADS and it wasn't fast enough. And I was like, what the heck? So I decided to pick up mouse and keyboard to try and learn that. Uh, yeah, it's a night and day difference when you can yeah. turn so quickly and so yep. accurately. I yep. can imagine the sandbox is so much different. Yeah. Now, uh, I'll mention this as well, cold snaps. Uh, cold snaps need to 
they're doing a little, little too much, I feel like. Especially with the Osmond mm -hmm. Mancy, but I feel like they might be doing a little too much. I'm not talking about a like a lot, a lot, but mm -hmm. they're a little over the over the threshold. Whatever Osme they Mancy, did, I'll, 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 I'll give you Osmond Osme Mancy, but for the others, just jump up, bro. No, <laughs> you, you, say this, you say this to me. This, this, this dude says this to me. <laughs> the base cold snap There's is like kind of stupid. Like sometimes it is stupid, people, yeah. but Osmo, uh, yeah, that one, that one goes goes pretty crazy. Um, yeah, I feel like if they uh, there was some kind of update, I think that Bungie put, it was I think it was a couple months back, right? That like yep. made the and it made cold the cold snap. snaps like very very good, like one yeah. of the best grenades for sure for sure. And I'm not I'm not saying it needs to be nerfed at base. I'm saying eh, okay, it's it's the line there, but I think we can we can definitely toss in Osmo Mancy now. You know, since mm -hmm. the baseline buff, we could say maybe it's a little bit too much on that one. But, I could uh, see them maybe yeah. turning down how fast it moves. You know what I mean? If it, if it mm. already tracks and has a pretty short activation timer, I can see them like turning down its its movement speed, so you actually do get that chance to backtrack. Mm. But again, it's mm. it's all based on usage rates, right? Like nobody plays mm. stasis anything in the Crucible, and that's largely because Astacross hasn't made a video on it. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna lie. I see I see quite a bit of stasis hunter. I actually do see quite a bit of stasis hunter on PC. Um, mm. Still don't see the goat class shade binder too much, uh, but I see quite a bit of like uh, hunter. So I think you're you're safe for the time being. Your melee is safe for the time being, Stadia. Oh, oh, the melee! I don't, I don't give a crap about the melee. It's all, it's all about that frost pulse, dude. Oh, frost God. pulse oh. is like the most underrated yeah. aspect in yeah. this game, and I, I'm gonna end up talking about it forever if you don't move to another subject. <laughs> so I'm gonna make changes to my build. Uh, listening to these conversations, I will become a shade binder now. I'm telling you, uh, you actually, you know, like we I'm did actually it. a huge proponent for shade binder to like come up and love, not because I want it nerfed or anything like that. But because there is a segment of the population that is not interested in zooming, and I'm not, I'm yeah. not putting mm -hmm. this on you, Angelic. I'm just saying in general. You know, I have a community member. Um, I don't who, like the zoom. <laughs> I have a community <laughs> member uh, who uses um, her her love for um, what is it? That 600 RPM void um, auto rifle, uh, the one that used to be the goat. It has Zen moment Gnawing on it. Hunger. Gnawing hunger. Love that mm -hmm. thing too. By the way, she loves it. She uses it all the time. That's her main. And then she uses uh, like a slug shotgun, you know, mm -hmm. and she does not move very fast. She does not have very high sensitivity. And, um, you know, I try to give her constructive criticism, you know, via my labs and stuff like that. Uh, and I'm just like, you really should get on Shadebinder, like seriously, because you force people to play at your pace, mm -hmm. you know? So if you think, you know, if you're just like, man, this person's moving too fast, I just want to just... I want to play with intention, of course, but I don't need all this zooming around me. Play Shadebinder. Learn Shadebinder. Master Shadebinder. There's no way that I can just move in your gravity at whatever pace I want with shade, if, with an established like Shadebinder build, an established like Shadebinder uh, like user, player, or whatnot. So mm -hmm. um, highly, highly recommend it. Um, and I hope that it always has something like that in its kit. It, you know, I don't think it's something that is crazy out of band, Shadebinder or anything like that. Uh, even if it gets to 50% like usage rate, I just don't think it's something that's crazy out of band. Um, it's just, uh, you know, getting frozen is just real tough, real tough. Is, is <laughs> there about any... To get frost armor there... too. What's up? I said we're about to get frost armor too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't think they've publicly said exactly what that's going to do hmm. number-wise to anything. But Does that mean it's, it's... going to be resistant to getting frozen or or so my assumption is the way it works right now uh like the the shade binder has a aspect where when you pick up a shard it gives you like an overshield or something Correct. um that overshield i think they're going to turn it into a new um what, what word that, do they use verb or something overshield um or... yeah I, I i assume it's gonna maybe be some kind of damage reduction shield that breaks off of you i don't know they haven't said anything but apparently it showed up in the uh the final shape um previews that they were showing uh for transcendence um and they mentioned that it was going to be added to the shade to the, all the stasis classes as well i just don't know what it does yet but i it's got to be a little mini buff so we'll see what that happens there mm, interesting And sorry, so, Angelica, I hope I didn't interrupt you. Oh, no, you're, no, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> no, you're good. To hop, um, to hop on the... Sh uh, sorry. Go ahead. I No. <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. Okay. I think we're all just kind of 
Like, <laughs> I, I didn't really have anything to add to that, to be honest. Gotcha. I kind of agree with everybody's takes here. I can see every single take kind of from each person mm -hmm. and take it for what it is. Um, mm -hmm. Not a huge PvP player. So <laughs> for me, uh, I'm definitely going to listen to what Tony has to say because he spends a lot yeah. of time in there. Um, so... For me, That's this is a this is a learning <laughs> this is a learning activity for me right now. I will say, the shade binder, like I've been using that a lot during onslaught, um, just setting out the turrets and then going through and not using my frost abilities so much as just using the pulse because the uptime on that is insane. Um, it is very especially for pve activities i don't see a lot of people using it and i feel like it's it's being super slept on right now at least on the pve side of things and now mm -hmm. hearing you guys talk about it in pvp like yeah, yeah. when you get yeah. the chance in pve instead of using osmio to have multiple bleak watchers out just mm -hmm. if you try try this just toss the grenade at the groups of enemies you get all your grenade energy back every single time and you freeze huge groups of uh huge groups of ads i don't it's even use okay. bleak watcher anymore it's amazing I, yeah. it's not okay tried an onslaught it's crazy yeah it's, yeah 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 and if you have a this build i've been running around with lately in pve it's a double discord sniper rifles so mm -hmm. on both slots, Ooh. both sniper rifles with Discord, you uh, you freeze a group of enemies, you blow them all up with one sniper, you swap to the other sniper, and for that six seconds, you one-shot everything. And when you're done with that six seconds, you swap back to the other sniper, you never run out of ammo. It is the best thing ever. With the special ammo That's... damage buff to frozen players, headshots, oh, it's great. That's getting nerfed. That's getting nerfed. Wait, you, I'm, some, somebody listening. I think I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> <Great>. Crazy. <laughs> I'm a huge um, uh, big boy Tether fan. Just uh, yeah, Orpheus. Same. Just, yeah. just Tether everything. Just yeah. Tether everything. Yeah. That's me. I, uh, it, because you can you can do a little bit of everything. Um, you know, if you need higher damage, you know, you can just throw your Tether. You need to kill a lot of ads, you can just throw you t your Tether. Exactly. You need to run away to go res someone, just throw your Tether and make sure nothing skips through. So a Tether build. A Tether build is a Toyota Land Cruiser. It's it, just it reliable. Does it does yep. everything. It does everything. It does everything. Mm -hmm. You need it to be a family car. You need to be a soccer mom. You need to, <laughs> you know, climb up a mountain. Tether's there. It'll, it'll always deliver, and it won't let you down. Well, and you have the the neutral game of being able to, if you're helping other people, being able to go invis, res somebody. Um, mm -hmm. If you need to kind of just go across the map and, you know, cap a zone or something. You can do that. Like, there's just so many options for it. Um, you've got weekend. You've got volatile. You've all got of these, your abilities are verbs. useful. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. all of your abilities are super useful. Um, which is something I, I know that on other characters, obviously, all of your abilities are useful. But I feel with Hunter overall, it's just so well rounded to do everything in PvP. Tell him. Um, Tell it, him. it just it just works. Every it works for everything. You can't really go wrong. I Void like 3.0 on one. Hunter is, 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 it's been like, ever since it came out, it's just been like the best in PvE. I have not stepped off of it. Um, it if it didn't you know, have invis, I don't think it would be nearly as good as mm -mm. it is now. Because, mm -hmm. like, every, I don't, every single time I ever see any solo Hunter gameplay of like a high um, level uh, mission, like solo dungeon, whatever, it's always, yeah, the but I'm not talking about solo though. I encounters. do agree with that part of it. You know, but I'm not talking about solo stuff. I'm talking about just yeah. just what Angelica was kind of like referring to, just just triples onslaught or whatnot. Mm -hmm. It carries lobbies, and mm -hmm. it's irrelevant of whether I'm going invis or not. Invis, obviously, I'm not. I mean, obviously, is useful, um, and and is very very useful for certain aspects like resing, like you know, evading, like stepping away for a second or whatever else. Uh, but what I enjoy the most about it is the Orpheus Tether, you know, just being so viable, just like Angelica, Angelica said, just versatile is the word I'm looking for. Um, and also just the ability to maximize those verbs, the weaken, the volatile, um, throw on, you know, Gerfalcon if you want instead. Um, the fact that I can just run up to like a brig or whatnot that's sitting on a zone 
and I have three and four different things that I can do to just take that thing out as quickly as possible and then hop on that zone. You know, I have my tether. Again, I have my smoke. I have my vortex grenade. I have my weaken off of that. I have my weaken off of both of them. Then when that, you know, so I end up taking out an enemy, then, you know what I'm saying, I end up dropping like a void breach and an orb. That leads into more of my super, which also gives me devour. Either of those things give me devour. Um, and just keep on looping and looping and looping. So it's just like... Uh, I also 3.0. think it's good Crazy. for the common like player. Um, granted, build crafting is going to make your subclass exceptional in PvP. Mm -hmm. Personally, mm -hmm. um, I've I've helped so many people from someone that's never played the game, played it once, twice, learning to play it, to people that have obviously played it as much as I have. Right? Mm -hmm. In higher tier activities, without build crafting, as good as Void may be and well rounded, I think there's just better sometimes if you really want to learn it um during arc season being able to use things like liars um i recently i i never really played warlock i was like super anti-warlock apologies for any of you warlock mains i put on sun bracers i was like damn this is easy mm -hmm. uh i did all my solo dungeons just for fun just i was like i'm just gonna do them all mm -hmm. you put on sun bracers you can heal you can kill you can do damage like high input damage there's so many options on top of having a well. Um, so as much as like, I would say there's so many well-rounded stuff, but if you don't use all of your mods in the way you're like build crafting the way you're supposed to, none of them are actually going to be exceptional. Um, and actually finding someone to help you set those things up if you don't know is kind of difficult too. Yeah. So yeah. Um, mm. I would like to see changes as much as, Void is well-rounded. I would like to see other supers become a little bit more well-rounded. Mm -hmm. Arc mm -hmm. to me feels useless right now. In PvP, if I'm being honest, like on a hunter, to me it just doesn't. Warlock doesn't it doesn't translate. feel no. If with warlock or hunter, Titan is still okay if you need it for Curus. But outside of mm -hmm. that, there's just so many things that just feel. Isn't, I don't know. Uh... Just, there's no point. Isn't Arc Hunter still really good with the Liar's combination blow build with one two punch? Mm -hmm. And it's or Assassin's still, Cowl even? I've, yes. I've seen that a lot in PvE. But if you're doing it like high tier activities, obviously mm -hmm. during the Arc season it was phenomenal. Um, it's still usable, but there's also such a large learning curve to the average player mm. that it makes it cycle. almost not viable. Yeah, it, it makes mm -hmm. it almost not viable. And you'd say, oh, yeah, it's easy. We play this no, game. I see that. Yeah, it's a good we point. We play this point. thousands of hours, right, at this point. Um, so the minor changes for us are a little bit easier. But I would say to the common player, like trying to teach them and trying to set up their builds so they're constantly regenerating health or gaining super or whatever they need, right? Especially it is in a little quarters, bit more difficult. which is the yes. Liar's Handshake build. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say it's not that bad. You can learn it takes me a few tries to kind of get it going rocking it correctly right staying alive mm -hmm. um but for the common player it's just is it viable <laughs> not really i don't mm -hmm. think so right and now probably no but every single time they've released a new expansion haven't they done some pretty serious ability buffs and nerfs across the board for a lot of things right well and we're about to get that oh okay i'm gonna <laughs> I don't... Uh, Sam samurai k125 in chat says with prismatic dropping soonish do you see one it taking over pvp and two being oppressive like stasis was on launch it'll 100 percent take over pvp because yeah. it's a new shiny thing mm -hmm. um whether or not i mean it, whether or not it completely dominates like i don't think it'll they'll ever have a stasis moment again they've learned that lesson <laughs> um but they will definitely tune it to be strong ish to the point where you start reconsidering your favorites and then they'll tune it down because that's the whole game. They have a marketing thing to do. They have a they have a they have a plan to sell copies. And if people are raving about this new thing, then people and make YouTube videos and stream it, then obviously it will help sell more units, get more boxes out out, out of the door, as it were. Um, as for its effects, TBD. Um, I think they're like some of the, some of the combinations you can come up with with prismatic sound incredible. Mm -hmm. um, oh, as yeah. for their practical application, I'm not sure. Well, it, again, there's a, there's a lot of unknowns, but you can guarantee it will at least just for the sake of marketing that it will be strong out the gate. Mm -hmm. well, and this like is their final go at it too, so I can imagine it's going to be even more so. Yeah. 
with it, it it seems like they're kind of taking a lot of supers that aren't getting a lot of play in uh, or abilities that aren't getting a lot of play right now individually on subclasses mm. and really pushing them into hey like mix and match all this stuff and hopefully it works for you <laughs> like and, yeah. and and you can kind of play around with that um does that mean that in in your mind is it kind of like a a jack of all trades master of none kind of situation That's or what it feels like it wouldn't, it, make, it wouldn't release it's not i don't think it's going to be i think it's just going to be the, the master thing. of all <laughs> every season is very artifact dependent as much yeah. as we we can see all these we can talk about changes to subclasses and weapons and as long mm -hmm. like as much as we want right we can we can go over it a million times but every season as we've seen before is going to be artifact dependent especially when it comes to pve and any a high tier pve um right. why did i do solar this season and why did i do it on a warlock yeah because of the artifact i i didn't really ever play it before i'd never put on sun bracers before um yeah and solar's still just really really strong right now um but that's because of the artifact so as much as the changes i'd like to see tweaks to pretty much everything but will it really matter when the artifact comes out i don't know For true yeah, if, if I had to guess what Prismatic would be best at, it sounds to me like it could be a really, really creative support class because mm -hmm. you can combine so many different abilities and so many different scenarios and you can perhaps use the best, or not the best, but you can use elements of different worlds to help carry somebody through a GM or carry them through Onslaught or whatever the, the, the du jour activity is. But it wouldn't make sense from a... from not just it wouldn't make sense from an intellectual or a game design perspective for, for prismatic to completely supplant everything that makes the subclasses that we know and love to be great sure i think the point is for it to take over you know a, this huge like maybe rehaul um because i will say bungie has the best marketing team on the planet they really mm -hmm. do because as mm -hmm. much as like you want to hate on the game sometimes and you get frustrated over a certain season whatever right their marketing team really just drags you back in. Oof. And um, when we saw the trailer, I was like, damn, that looks cool. But then I was like, damn, PVP is so screwed. I was like, this is going to be a mess. Uh, yeah. What I, I, I was more worried about um, the class items, actually. Less mm -hmm. worried about yeah. uh, this prismatic in general. I was actually more concerned about the class items because I was like, what does that actually mean for, mm -hmm. you know, being able to have maybe shields that ricochet damage, but also being able to have, you know, a different class, like something like dunes at the same time. Right. Mm. Um, I was like, that kind of like, that sounds dangerous. Like that sounds like very risky for PVP mm -hmm. players, especially because it is by chance. Um, Imagine everybody no starts getting the best stuff. I, I yeah. found it interesting that they decided to lock it down to only the prismatic subclass. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what they said? You can only use yeah. those class items on prismatic. I, I I don't know if this is like an, an it was an internal issue if they allowed it on other subclasses like it just didn't work and they had to remake prismatic specifically to work with those. But I I feel like that's probably going to push the 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 issue that people are worried about just prismatic being the everybody uses it situation like like you like you said it will replace everything because now you can have multiple half exotics on at the same time mm. but only on the subclass yeah. now only those see, people will use it just because they can do that see this is this is the big question ultimately is that is because the exotic class system basically gives you 50 to 75 percent functionality of one ex mm -hmm. exotic but gives mm -hmm. you two of them yeah. And is that going to be, is is 50% of two exotics more of a problem and more oppressive and hard to tune and counter and all of that? Is that harder to deal with than one exotic? And to me, the answer is, depends on the exotic. It really just mm -hmm. depends, depends on, on the, the exotics, it, yeah. I think. yeah. Yeah. So because... how do you account for that? Is there any way also, to telegraph that? We have yeah. to As a player, that like in high end comp. Some exotics have basically two things they do. You know, they might give you handling speed and on top of that, a giant electric current so mm -hmm. you have to consider that there are exotics that already have multiple things they do so how is that going to be split up you know with other exotics granted i i don't know what all is coming out obviously i'm just 
for me, it's a little scary. I, the class item is what I was mostly concerned about. Um, I also kind of hoped Prismatic was going to be one of those like potentially like high tier PVE, like, you know, when you could just pick up a buff or something, right? Mm -hmm. And it was just something cool we could do in certain activities. Um, I don't know. Oh, you didn't think Prismatic would be like an actual subclass? At itself? first, like, yeah. At first, okay. I didn't think that. Mm -hmm. At first, no, I. That's true. Mm -hmm. In the in the in the trailer, the first thing they showed us when they were going against the uh, was it the Subjugator? They stood on top of a circular. Uh, it was like an effect on top of one of the, the 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 buildings in the tower there, and I was like, oh, do you stand on top of that to get Prismatic? Just like we had to activate the Strand little mm -hmm. floating yeah. things in. Mm -hmm in a light fall to get strand and I, I don't know if that's just going to be a similar thing where you just get the ability for the first training thing of it but uh but yeah no i see what you i kind of thought it might be something like you know you do you remember uh doing like the season of the deep season where you mm -hmm. would step in and you could basically pick up a type of buff i kind of thought that maybe it was going to be something like that where you stepped into you know the raid or stepped into something and you could basically or a new seasonal activity and you could pick up a buff or something um i didn't think it was going to be something we could use Constant. all the time because it looked broken i was like man this is not you know you get you get stranded and then needed at the same time sounds absolutely horrible um i don't mm. think they could do that to pvp but then i was like Ugh, see definitely seems like it's like an action per minute subclass kind of like what they were pitching oh, yeah. with strand mm. like just being able to constantly rattle off different abilities yeah, like, i don't know if they were giving themselves like extra ability regen in that footage because you know yeah the, the, the devs they can do it but it looked like it was grenade after melee after class ability yes. after grenade mm -hmm. after melee and i'm like well oh, that was when they were that, that's what that's when they were in the presence of transcendence though correct yeah i believe well, so. that's what so, made me well, that's what made me think that it was something that you you could use only for certain activities because it didn't it felt a little unreal, like excessive. Maybe is that mm. like, is that the right word? But I guess if mm -hmm. transcendence is supposed to be the prismatics super, then it's supposed to be in a way excessive, right? That would make more sense. Yeah. Yeah. Just the trailer looked. It was a lot. It was just yeah. a lot. So is transcendence supposed to be the super for for prismatic? I think so. Oh, you, or do you I actually get a point. super? I think, I think you, get you actually get a super too, right? Yeah, you do. Yeah, I think oh. so. <laughs> that was my assumption. I, th I thought transcendence was just your abilities, and like the um, the more you killed, the more up on the higher on the bar the more, you got. The more up for, on those light and dark, dark bars, and did they, they get to 100%. not show what the supers? If we're assuming there is a super for it, did they not show that yet? Then. Because I know, aren't they adding the the hunters are getting the uh, like the the throwing knife teleport to it, but that's for arc. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. the titans are getting a void, like the axe that they can throw. I think that's on void. But um, I think those are part of. Oh really? You think those are part of prismatic? Is that what they? I believe so. Oh. Huh. If I'm wrong, I actually have no clue. <laughs> it's maybe yeah, maybe that's a good point. Yeah, no, I I, I guess I can't really speak on something I'm not a hundred percent sure on. Yeah. I, b I believe that those were like the transcendence was the ability action per minute. And then the super was Got whatever it. they had. It was something. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. my assumption as well, which is, is a bit, a bit much. It's kind of like having uh, two supers. At once. What was it? <laughs> what was it back in, back in D one? You, you'd have, what is it? Is it radiant skin? Is that what it was for uh, like the solar warlock? You wall. could choose radiant yeah. skin or you could, you could be, you could, choose to uh resurrect or whatever yeah self-res kind of like having both of those you know mm -hmm. <laughs> radiant skin at some point in time and then self-res you know your actual is like super um as well at a certain point in time i don't know um it'll be interesting to see i i guess i'm not really I i've gotten out of the habit of you know i've tried to get out of the habit of getting like all worked up anxious or worried about pvp mm -hmm. once a new dlc especially like an annual dlc drops because you just yeah. know Shit's gonna be it's gonna be broken. It is what I, it is. You know what I'm saying? The point sounds, the point is the I point is you know expectations. Yeah, I mean yeah. my expectation is that things will be broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, and I think so, they're fully fully um uh embracing the, uh, the I think they even said in the in the little mini trailers that they're embracing the brokenness brokenness and jankiness of it. Um yeah, I think that's yeah. gonna severely affect those who like PvP a lot, but I mean I think that's just something we're just gonna have to deal with and understand this is not gonna be a balanced game. And that's okay. 
Well, I, really I think, I, yeah, it never really has yeah. been, you know, I just, what my expectation is from there and what I would be disappointed is if, you know, after, you know, that initial period of things just being absolutely broken um, and, uh, and, and things being adopted in the crucible that, uh, that may end up kind of breaking down the integrity of the gameplay loop, uh, which always is going to be the case um, whenever this comes out uh, and we're super powerful in PVE to start, especially, um, you know, as, as long as they like tone things back, basically, they pull things back a little bit, um, you know, and they do it in a time frame that doesn't absolutely frustrate the PVP player base. Um, there is a certain balance to the unbalanced aspect of destiny 2 uh destiny 2 at a baseline will always be unbalanced that's what makes it fun in a lot of ways um as well and everyone should accept that if you are a pvp main you know otherwise you will be disappointed 20 20 20 20 24 7 um Although, but there is what, a balance there is a balance to the unbalanced what do we think about perhaps actually having expectations that they will balance it quickly because the strike team has been fucking fire since they started. <laughs> hey, they set them expectations. I'm I'm just sticking with what y'all said now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you I know? get you. I got you. I, I just I have me, faith that, I... that. I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead. I, um, I think just for me, it's just don't have too many expectations because that just leads to disappointment. So I'll just mm. just go with it. Just go with whatever yeah, yeah. happens. You know. Mm -hmm. I'm normally i would be the same as you guys like i would just be like yeah okay it's gonna be things can be broken and things are gonna be wild and we're gonna have fun as much as much as we can before things get really old but i i feel like with the with the strike team that they have just they've identified with, with all of the write-ups they've done they've not only identified correctly the pain points that we all have as pvp players but then when they've written about them they have such a deep understanding like they actually under they actually play the game for, for mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say for once. That's mean. <laughs> but like, <laughs> but like they, play their game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just saying that beforehand, like especially when airborne effectiveness was introduced and and some of the changes that came in during that time, there was seem there was this big disconnect between the changes they wanted to make and how bit. the game actually played. Yeah. And it felt like you know pe players like physics and and a couple of other high-end people who were talking about these issues on twitter they felt like they were completely ignored and there was no uh connection whatsoever they weren't even mm. the, like w did anybody working on pvp actually hit max rank and comp you know that those are the sort of questions that are being asked but now i think especially last six months or so i think that sentiment's completely turned around and mm -hmm. i feel like there is i wouldn't say there's total faith in the pvp strike team because you know it's just been so long without actual coherent vision of pvp um but things are looking up in that sense and i think they're, they're they are slowly but surely earning their stripes and if they yeah. ship this thing knowing it's broken and they're like yeah we're gonna rein this in in two or three months or two or three weeks whatever the case is there's a timeline and then they execute those changes and they're actually like perfection then that's off and that's that's happened at least a few like several mm -hmm. times, you know, in the last like six months at the very least. Um, I've been pretty impressed with that. We're we're looking at a team that is is yeah, can't nobody say they're not competent at understanding the context, right, of of where the sandbox stands across the skill spectrum. Um, understanding it oftentimes at a very I mean, I'm sure they understand it at a high level, but communicating that understanding at a very high level. Yeah. To the point where I'm sitting there reading the twid and I'm just like, this is exactly what I mean. Like, you write mm -hmm. at this point, this, you know what? That's, and that's the reason why that right there, you write. You that's exactly, hard. yeah, you know? Um, so it's just like they, they understand and they're stepping through and communicating, you know, why uh, this change right here was made because of this step in the mechanic, this step in the mechanic, and how it interacts with this other ability over here and how that ends up playing together to end up creating an oppressive environment for a particular part of the skill spectrum. And then they end up, you know, you know, keying that together with where, uh, you know, that ends up putting certain like skill based matchmaking measures and things like that. I mean, they're killing it. They're killing it. The comms, yeah. just please keep those coming because I'm loving reading. I know everybody is not necessarily trying to read a book. I am. <laughs> because well, it just, just shows me just the, to, the, the degree of like competency is, is, yeah, they're hitting it. They're doing it. Just to build on that real quick, the fact not only are they doing that and they're writing Bibles, 
but also the fact that they're not afraid to experiment. They're not afraid to do things that will piss people off one week and they'll be like, yep. okay, yeah, yeah, that didn't work, my bad. And, and then they go back to something a little bit. They go back to the drawing board at the very yep. least. Yeah, how can you be upset at that? Uh, like, I've been frustrated with, you know, uh, like crates on the wall, for example. I can't stand oh. crates on the wall, you know? Mm. Yeah. But they're exper like, like, how can I really be like really truly frustrated like they're experimenting they flip things so quickly you know and it's crates on the wall this week the next week it's it's back to the special ammo system then next it's like some sort of mix then it's like a one 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 it's like a two 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 whatever they want to call it you know like keep See, experimenting i, I do and like the, that the, the, the one thing that i don't understand why they haven't done anything with it yet seeing that everybody that i speak to that does trials you know if you want to say competitively or just does it all the time is like the 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 prevalence of like wells and bubbles with the flag and that they haven't done anything different with the flag in a long time mm -hmm. which i think the only reason you see those two supers constantly in trials winning matches is just because of the flag i remember well mm. and bubble used to be used a good bit before not as much but they really were only used for like oh shit moments right or to get a revive mm -hmm. real quick, which is still mm -hmm. very powerful and will win you a match. But in, with the in, flag now, God. Sorry. In fairness, they have been moving away from like stand on a point type yeah. OBJ mm -hmm. and they've been more inclined to do other things. Like, I'm not if the biggest fan of collision. Move, I, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Like, like collision is a perfect example of that. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of any King of the Hill game mode that doesn't require you to be in the hill. That's just me. But then I think about it for more than two seconds. It's like, if you stand in one area willingly, how much bullshit can somebody throw at you and they'll just kill you immediately? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, Wither yep. Horde yeah. would be hard meta, you know? Um, so it's the it's the best version of King of the Hill you, that you could possibly get in D2, potentially. In this sandbox. Um, in this sandbox, correct. Um, so, yeah, like, like th I used to joke with my chat, just like, everything is just Slayer with a different twist on it. But mm -hmm. it seems like now they're moving away from like what you're saying. Time is is basically like, yeah, everything is just control with with a bit of with 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 a few tweaks here and there. And now if you go towards collision, or maybe you do, what if you had trial supremacy? That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. you know, just try something new that doesn't involve strictly standing on a point or killing. Well, I, don't I don't know how you guys feel how trials should play specifically but whenever i thought about trials in the past i always saw it as the the game mode for 3v3 and that's mm. it there is no like alternative objectives there's no do this or that it's just purely you against you and your two teammates against three other people weapons mostly and abilities and really that's it there's no other objectives so like my personal opinion on trials is I feel like that's what trials should be about is like you going against another team and there's nothing else you have to focus on. And like, I understand wanting to throw in a little bit of like spice in there, right? To maybe I mix mean, some things up, but. But the zone was, see, here's my issue with the zone. I do and don't like it. I don't mm -hmm. like it because of, yes, everybody just pushes with well and bubble and shields and whatever they can to hold that zone. But here's the thing, there's so many people that just constantly disengage fights that having a zone forces people mm -hmm. to get oh. into gunfights. It forces you. That if is we true. start taking the problems of having things like excessive overshields, rifts back to back, um, I think there's I think I don't think the zone is that huge of an issue if it's in making you engage fights. Um I I think that goes back to as Tony said earlier. Overshields and having shields, barricades, just that you can just sit behind. Um, I think that's a bigger issue than yeah. things like capping a zone to force an engagement. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also, mm. I'd also it, just want to back that up by saying that most of casual PvP revolves around zones. So it's more of a, oh, for if it, say a casual goes into trials, they'll be like, what do I do here? And then they see his own and say, oh, I know this. Yeah. I can do that. It's easily yeah. digestible to the masses. Mm -hmm. Completely agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, it's obvious that Bungie is very hesitant to, you know, address the overshields, the barricades, um, the bubble um, in PvP. Um, and, you know, uh, I applaud them for giving us collision at the very least because uh, it's still a zone area right but it's not a zone that you I, I totally agree that it's the best fit for this sandbox as opposed to a traditional like king of the hill which would just end up being barricades over shields bubbles wells um and uh you know they're trying to find some sort of middle ground basically between you know some of these really strong like obj kits um and uh 
and also just a wider uh, concern in the crucible for uh, incentivizing engagement um, and doing it in a way that is easily digestible to the masses, a zone, for example. So, you know, I, I, I applaud him. I do think that in the end, Angelica is correct, that it does come back to some some oppressive stuff about those kits that we mentioned, the overshields, the barricades, you know what I'm saying, the bubbles being tier five, the wells being tier five, or whatever tier it is now, but the fastest charging like supers and whatnot. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if we end up like leaning on that just a little bit, then I do feel like we'll have, you know, a more dynamic game in addition to, you know, wh what I think Collision is. I think Collision is a better mode than most people give it uh, credit for after playing yeah, it I quite do. a bit in I scrims. Mm -hmm. So, you, uh, sorry, I want to quickly ask Tony a question. If they, if they uh, hit Bubble and Well to be not tier five, let's say tier three. And they made what is that the same tier as what is that? What is tier three? Because I don't even know. Because they condensed the tiers. It's like one, two, and three now. I feel like is there only three tiers? Of Golden supers? Gun uh, Marksman, the powerful one. The three shot it. Golden Gun. Like if is it has the same force? cooldown as that. Yes. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay. One. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So if they put if they put it at the same cooldown as that, and they made overshields to the point where you don't get instant overshields, like it's a slow recharge, for example, would that fix? Like, would there be any pain points left? Okay. I think that the lowest uh, hanging fruit for overshields is removing it from the entire team. Giving it to the, giving it to the Titan, you know, allowing it to be instant. That's fine. You know, just, I mean, I'm not saying it's fine, but what I am saying is the lowest hanging fruit is giving it to the entire team. Yeah. Knock that out first. Leave the rest. See how that plays. The super needs to come down at least one tier. I don't think it needs to get massacred by two tiers. Do mm. those two things, see how it plays. And I, I think like we'd be in a good spot. Tweaking and mm. less, decent, like, decent spot. We've seen before, uh, after, since D1 beta, um, a lot of the times they nerf things to the ground. I would like to see tweaks yeah. as opposed to just nuking things. I, I, I hate that aspect of stuff that... Oh, it's too strong, so they wait two years and then it's garbage. And, like, and they've been and they've been I doing this. That. And they I very frequently go yeah, like yeah, either a huge yeah. buff or a huge nerf, but no. Yeah. Like, super and they've, small they've been doing it more frequently. You know, and so, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but they've been doing that more frequently. And mm -hmm. I think they've been doing a better job yeah. of just like doing those tweaks. What I will say as well is the psychological aspect of it is huge. This is why you don't really need to like nerf something crazy. Peacekeepers are still very, very good. It was just a nerf and then they, exactly, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's what pulls them off of the usage, and that's all that I really care about most times. You know, most times, you know, some stuff needs to be put into the dirt sometimes, but most times it's just, hey, I want folks to equip something that they love, um, and it to make a discernible improvement in their gameplay, you know, mm -hmm. as an exotic should, for example. Um, but I just don't want to see it like too often. So if you end up pulling and tweaking a little bit. It's the psychological thing that pulls people off of it as well. Um, and that also, you know, leads to a greater nerf, effective nerf to it. Um, and that's why you don't need to absolutely nerf something in order to pull it, pull it down, basically, yeah, if you little, guys see what I'm saying. Little mm -hmm. tweaks to me are easier, even if, and I agree with what you said earlier, Tony, the, hey, small changes and like being able to see like on their twabs and on everything where you just start seeing a huge list of stuff. And there's a lot of numbers. And even though they might look very, very small, I like seeing that. Test it. Mm -hmm. Like, even yeah. if I hate it, I, it's okay. I don't mind not liking something. But what I don't like is not seeing any changes made for a long, right. long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That is yeah. frustrating to me. Because that means there's there's no effort. Like um, by, the, by this time, they very could have easily... Like, bring up a, a pain point from Tony's side about the overshields, right? From the Void Titans and everything mm -hmm. in general. By now, they could have very easily just made it give you less in PvP. That's it. Just tweak the number instead of five, maybe ten per second, five per second, mm -hmm. right? Like it's very slow. Like I, I wonder, you know, why haven't those small little tweaks across multiple different pain points? Because been game dev is hard. For a while. Yeah. Know, okay. I understand. I, <laughs> I almost think like it's it's one of those things where like that kind of change comes on the comes on the back burner of we need to ship this dlc that's already been pushed back sure twice yeah, sure yeah. but and is, okay i'm not gonna armchair here i'm just gonna shut up <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and and so like 
one of the, one of the things that like uh, so we we already mentioned the PVP strike team. Um, we also have a new director stepping in after mm-hmm. like when the final shape launches, essentially with Tyson Green, who is like the granddaddy of the Forge mode. Um, do you guys feel like? there will be massive shifts or like, do you guys feel like there will be any more shifts post final shape that lean toward a more positive experience? Yeah. Hands up in the air. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got no clue. I got yeah. no clue. I, here's TBD. the thing. No expectations. That's, I, yeah. I don't have, I don't want to have negative expectations there. there mm-hmm. Cause there's a difference. I'm not here to like, be like, Oh, it's going to be shit. This yeah. prismatic mm-hmm. or PVP. No expectations. I would like to wait and see. And also, not just for my own opinion, part of being a content creator is I also get to listen to how people feel and maybe look at their side of it or watch people like Tony that spends a lot of time in Crucible. Too, too um, much time. But still, you have a you have definitely a different you know set of eyes than I do because I consider myself a complete casual. I am maybe average when it comes to PvP. Um, so for me it's just listen pay attention and then also test stuff um sometimes i'll just run in and myself and just see how something feels um see if it feels off see if it feels a little too easy to be aggressive um see if i need to just disengage fights more um but also just know i'm not gonna have any expectations just i'm gonna watch first because mm-hmm. if i go in there negative as soon as something's bad i'm gonna be like I hate this, mm. and I don't. I don't want to do that. I really don't yeah. want to do that. Yeah, and I, I just want to say there's really a, a predicting. There's a there's a validity. Yeah. There's a validity as well to you know like listening to your perspective too. I just want to you know make that known. You know, like there's a validity of listening to someone that you know plays PvP uh, a little bit more casually, um, along with someone that plays a little too much, like myself. Different experiences in the game, you know, uh, should. Um, and does cater to both experiences and therefore um, equal levels of validity, you know, when when listening to the experience that you have uh, versus the experience. I learn a lot, you know, listening uh, to to you and other community members um, who play the game very differently than I do, uh, whether it be frequency, um, style of play, et cetera. So, um, yeah, just want to make that point. Well, I heard Forge all right, that's the end of the podcast, just, everybody. All right. Uh, <laughs> so, so you heard Forge, you heard I, For, Forge Granddaddy in what? I heard Forge Daddy, and I just can't stop thinking about having blood gold and too. That would be perfect. Cold storage, um, please. So, um, before we get into a, a few more audience questions, um, we did have like a new weapons balance blog go out today. Mm -hmm. Um, And with it came a lot of changes. Um, Like we will be seeing um, a lot of the different um, specs going away, like boss spec, taken spec, minor spec, major spec, and adept big one spec. Those are all like going the way of the dodo. Um, Mm -hmm. And we're seeing things like uh, we're going to have, what was the one that I saw that would affect PvP pretty heavily here? Um, DMT? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The DMT one uh, where they are making it, uh, the hip, hip fire fantasy isn't landing as well as we'd like. So we've bumped up the rate of fire and added a bit of stability to cranial spike to make this easier to control. At the same time, his strength is skewed a little high on mouse and keyboard and a little low on controller. So we're tuned accuracy and magnetism to address this. Um, what are you guys looking forward to with these changes? So they've made a 140 RPM scout rifle. Mm-hmm. Hooray! Do, do, do you have any idea how broken that's going to be? <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> yeah, none of that it's, sounded good to me. I'm gonna like it's, be it's, honest. It's, that. I, I don't. I don't like to be doomsayer. I like to like mm-hmm. think of things as as oh, this is an experiment. But like I I did joke about this on on X whatever. Um, you know, take a shot anytime. You know, they've reworked DMT. There's going to be a few shots after this. I think. <laughs> 
like this is not gonna fly this is gonna be so incredibly busted i i I haven't used it in a while but is it really as bad as like it's one that they have to keep on buffing and nerfing and buffing is it really no why they keep like it's it's got a grip on that dev team i swear to god that gun has a grip (laughs) on that dev team it really does because it comes back it'll come back for a month and then it just disappears i don't see it again for months (laughs) at a time and then it comes back and then it's just like back with a vengeance and then mm-hmm. it's gone again. And I'm like, well, it's gone again, except for the people who are DMT mains love the gun mm-hmm. and just want to put like a hundred thousand kills on it. And, you know, it's one of those guns that have a little mini game. And anytime there's a gun that has a mini game, I feel like it should be relegated to just the folks for the most part, you know, either folks that want to experiment every once in a while or, you know, the folks that are just diehard DMT users, diehard Hawkmoon users, et cetera, et cetera, because you just don't want to see these guns in the hands of, you know, in 12 people in a lobby, you don't want to see it, you know, three people on each team have it. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to throw this out there out of all the cults surrounding exotic weapons. Um, we all agree that Fighting Line is the best cult. The DMT <laughs> I would cult, generally agree with it, that. Yeah, the DMT cult is scary. Like, these people don't shower. <laughs> they, they're, they're really upset. You hear this, Juski? I'm you, instantly, you hear, I'm instantly and... annoyed. Like if if there's uh, a fighting line in the lobby, I'm I'm sorry for whoever uses it. it. I'm annoyance, like annoyance your personality is just the first stage of instantly. Acceptance. Well, okay. like instantly, I'm just gonna assume your personality just just sucks because <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm broken. Listen, listen, there's some great people on both sides. I'm, no, I'm sorry. I can't do that. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, all right. Not, oh, not for boy, Fighting right. Lion somebody, because somebody shut this guy I feel down. like you just want to ruin Jeff someone's like, day. It, it yeah, honestly feels Dubai like too long. you want to ruin someone's day. <laughs> well, uh, since we were on the topic of the dev insight there and talking about certain stuff that's going to affect PvP, uh, sneaking in there, the wave frame grenade launchers. So they Ooh, said that yes. they're going to change it. So now the blast radius stat does affect the radius and the like length that. of it, which is going to be crazy because it says in there that it's going to go from zero to 100 and the baseline was 50. It's going to be 50. Which yeah. means what is 100 going to look like? I'm 25, afraid. It's already crazy. I've gone against people using like disruption break waveframes with like uh, Rat King or something. It just it's insane. It is insane. So now that I, they can potentially even get a hundred blast radius, and that even becomes even more effective, that's what I'm particularly worried about. But do, you know, do you know what that means though? In effect, because we only have two crafted waveframes: explosive personality and forbearance. Those Barons, are now. Yeah. Those are going to be the go-tos because you can tune them to be max plus radius and whatever that looks like that's gonna be crazy yeah and, and generally i would see this as so? uh i, I mean feel as far like as like more add control in oh we're talking about in pvp or pve PV. i was talking pvp first but if oh, we're going okay. okay, okay, okay. okay. no, no, talking about pv we can talk about both sorry i know i i i was like man i feel like it's already used kind of a lot in PvE, but <laughs> yeah. I was like, <laughs> right, okay, those dregs from that far away is already getting my blast. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't really think there's an issue there, but I guess PvP is a whole different. I don't even know if I, if I see. It'll be, it'll be we're talking about PvE dubs all around with this change, honestly. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. oh yeah, yeah. I would generally fantastic. Agree with that. I hope I think, the I think sandbox the... has changes though. There's, I hope they're not the same because that another GL season of being spammed with it just mm-hmm. sounds absolutely horrendous honestly yeah i think i think the thing that i took away most from the gl the waveframe gl changes is that now you're gonna have to balance a little bit more uh between your blast radius and your velocity um uh stat and so in, in pvp though it'll be interesting i do agree with city of time like it kind of it kind of tickled my brain for a second i'm just like okay well you know velocity is is cool and I mean, if, if people are stacking into that blast radius, you know, I don't know. Those things are already fast enough. It's not like you need to max out velocity. Now people are going to max out that blast radius and it might become a problem because they did say they brought the length back some, the actual distance with which that wave can travel or whatnot. But I just wonder whether like the numbers that they gave, that 22 to 15 or something like that, was it baseline 50 
or whether that was the max that it can go. You so see what I'm saying? 22 to 15, I think, was specifically for, uh, oh, it reduced the, let me see, reduce the waves from 22 meters to 15. Oh, I see, I see. Um, see what I'm saying? I so what now at max yeah. blast radius, you know, uh, which will affect Where's the length, number? the distance. Yeah. You know, like I would have, I would assume that twenty two was the baseline, and now the that's baseline is fifty. Is 15. Now that's fifteen, so that yeah. maybe twenty two is a hundred. So, not to be crude here, or I'm going to be a little bit crude here. So, we're saying that blast radius affects girth of the wave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my! Yes. Well, it's it's, it's girth and length. Hey, it's girth and, and length. length. And it's, it's, it's doing height. it all. It's doing and it height. all. Yeah. Yeah, well, I that's actually anger. the part that scares me. It says it actually scales height as well, which means you won't be able to jump over them <laughs> as easily, depending on how much so, it scales the height. Hundred mm -hmm. blast radius disruption break grenade launcher. Got it. I went out. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> It'll be interesting to see what that looks like for sure. So, so we'll touch on this real quick, and then we'll get to audience questions because I know we'll I touch know on this, shall we? Yeah, yes. Uh, so at the bottom, all the way at the bottom, they say the future. So now, now that we're largely happy with weapon damage and PvP, we're going to be moving the PvP-specific tuning out of the game modes and into base weapon tuning in the future. This will give us all Ooh. the ability to fine-tune damage per weapon subfamily, example, uh, on precision hand cannons instead of all hand cannons. We also have some big system changes we're working on for future releases, including redesigns of the PvP and PvP PvE ammo economies. Introducing more player choice into weapon mods and more new weapon types. Um, so, based on those two paragraphs, what I, would you like to see in those changes? I mean, first of all, I just want to say I like this. It sounds like they finally figured out a way to do fine tuning mm -hmm. instead of just slapping on a big here band aid. I would I like to see like shotguns give... be more consistent. Honestly, I agreed with shotguns? you earlier. Shotguns, I feel yeah. like sometimes yeah. I'm shooting yeah. absolute just nukes. It's it's the and then the it's next the, it's, it's peanuts. The goddamn desync in this game. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's driving me crazy. The lack of those dedicated That's what servers. Is. We need that Sony That's money. That's what it is. I don't care that we get dedicated servers or not. But like, there's been certain periods of time where shotguns were working better simply because of the fact that lobbies were better synced. People mm -hmm. were better synced to each other in the lobbies. If there is a slight desync between you and someone else, you shoot and you aim at them, your pellets will not necessarily land where yeah. you, like, like they will be slightly to the left or slightly to the right of that in actuality with regards to the actual hit detection of it. And so shotguns don't necessarily need a buff. I, I don't necessarily think, I think it's the, it's the desync in these lobbies. The it's driving me I don't, I don't, crazy. Yeah, I don't the network is driving me crazy. The shotguns would necessarily be considered a buff, but it, it, consistency is, it, you make, if you make, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't think making something more consistent is necessarily going to make it overpowered. It's just going to make it perform the way it was supposed to. Yeah. Right. But like, how can they make it more consistent without, doing something drastic to the way the connections work. Because, I mean, well, in that case, it's not really a shotgun buff, then. It's an everything buff, because now everything hits better. Well, shotguns, shotguns do enemy. seem to be affected. I agree with Angelica. They do seem to be more affected by yeah. this this stuff than, than anything else. The, sure. the other downside of this is if, like, shotguns are already pretty high in the usage rate, especially conditional fi finality. But even if you take away conditional finality, shotguns are still pretty predominant, you yeah. know, in the meta. We I end up making just, things more consistent than they might of destiny, start pulling. Though. Um, you talk about shotguns game, as far as... Yeah, oh, I think it's... Uh, the way we play the game, a lot of the times, like, especially, like, say, uh, say, like, quick play, um, it's just a free-for-all. Whether... Mm -hmm. And with abilities right now, you can get so close to other players without mm -hmm. taking damage, right? That's why that I use the shade binder. <laughs> I do feel that, of course, shotguns or even fusions are going to be really, really strong because you can get so close to players without taking any hits for it. Um, or you can just backpedal, um, especially with these AR and SMG metas that we've just had so aggressively. Um, you can make mistakes. Now, if you're a 120 player, you can't really make those mistakes because if you miss a shot, you're probably going yeah. to die. So I don't know. For me, I feel like shotguns are always going to be really strong regardless of how garbage they are. That's something they're nice. they're one of those they're one of the few specials where no thought is required it's just like go up to them and pull the trigger you know and that, they'll, always, yeah. they'll always be popular because of that um but i mean what what time and and tony were talking about it just comes down to networking ultimately mm -hmm. and until they have systems or 
maybe they do, and they're just and we're just de- dealing with the realities of P2P player to player networking. And in that case, it's, 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 their, it's their matchmaking on top of it because you go into like the CBMM like open skill yeah. um, playlist that has a good amount of uh, uh, pop to it, you know, such as the new territory playlist. Yeah, and it's just like everything for the most part was like hella crispy in there, like the first couple days yeah. at the very least, you know. So it's just like it's i i do not know what's going on i do know that personally for me in my experience it has gotten significantly uh frustrating the last month i would say i don't know what changed um uh but i do notice like i said in more connection based matchmaking or open skill matchmaking uh things are working as intended uh it's very difficult for me to make any sort of as- impact some days uh whenever matchmaking is is stacked with uh with some sort of like skill based matchmaking or rank based or whatever else it's just it's just a wash whether my play style you know saying with a hand cannon and a shotgun a 140 hand cannon legendary is going to end up playing out um or not yeah. simply because i don't know if my stuff is going to register um, i think i think so. something that will help it, it can be a double edged sword too because people can abuse this but having clear displays of matchmaking statistics or networking mm-hmm. strength like other games do like having a ping counter or yeah. you know showing your packet loss or stuff like that like if there's a toggleable option to show that on the screen then we could give better feedback as well we could clip things yeah. that happen and say listen this is what happened you can see the uh the, the the network situation here and just from my own experience and all these clips i've had i've always noticed that when i'm at so and so paying or packet loss or whatever whatever the things are i'm not a networking expert, Metric, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah yeah but you can then deduce trends and then they can perhaps work towards that but mm-hmm. i still think that it's ultimately if we're going to be doing player to player in 2024 2025 that's just that's just life unfortunately now one thing they could do that would fix all of this is that they could make counterbalance do something <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm telling you man whatever shit gets real decent man, i put on that counterbalance it'd be working bro i'm telling okay, you so i don't so know context, context, context for everybody right now just i can Con- just context him for in the back. T- tony spreads <laughs> the gospel right that counterbalances does something on shotguns even though devs have explicitly stated that it does nothing i mean let's be real you really gonna believe merc though man come on now you know what i'm saying it's, it's like merc or me or me i, I seem hella trustworthy y'all see my where's twitter you? i seem hella trustworthy tony, bro tony, tony where's your exotic weapon that was crafted to perfection huh where's your revision zero yeah you know uh i don't know man hawk moon hawk moon <laughs> that's, my, that's my revision zero that's the gun that was made for me <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but uh in all seriousness yeah um I do hope that they figure out their networking issues because the game just plays beautifully. Mm-hmm. Um, like when when things are just when hit detection is just on point. I, I never require things to be perfect. All I'm saying is the last like month or so, whatever has been going on has just been uh, like like really bad on the the networking and and my experience um, playing uh, at uh, a high end or whatever end you want to put me wherever. That, I mean, the devs know where I'm at. I don't know where I'm at. So mm-hmm. so yeah. I'll, uh, I'll tell you what, I feel bad for every, regardless of how you felt about, I'm going to say the S word, regardless of how you felt about Stadia, okay, I feel bad <laughs> <laughs> about for everybody who never got a chance to give it a shot on a good connection, because yeah, it was, it it was, was nice. the best. It, it, it was the quintessential Destiny 2 experience in terms of connection. There was mm-hmm. no lag. Your shots went exactly where they went. There was no melee lunges that whiffed every so often. There was no stuttering and everybody. It was beautiful. And wow. when Stadia went to, when they opened up cross play, and then it went from only Stadia players against Stadia to Stadia against PC as well, um, I it just. Having been on Stadia for two years before they opened up crossplay, completely different game. Completely yeah. different game. And that's that's game. what that's what I that's that's where I see the majority of the desync, you know, because it's crossplay basically. And when crossplay came through the first the like, you know, whenever crossplay opened up, um, mm-hmm. that's when I saw a lot of the desync, especially the PlayStation players in particular. I don't know what I, it I, is I, between <laughs> PlayStation PlayStation and PC, but that that desync was like noticeably worse than like anything else with regards to like PC to PC or PC to Xbox. Um and so, you know, I just, you know, wanna push them to continue to, you know, like work with that and get that crossplay uh like yeah, because it's it's super frustrating. Um, super frustrating. 
I would like to see statistics wise, like their data to show whether or not PC players against PC players experience the same or more or less levels of like latency compared to having to deal with PlayStation or Microsoft's um, uh, whatever cross play right. system they have. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I would be really interested to see if they if there's like an increase, like a one or two milliseconds here or there that can affect. It would something. be interesting at this point, yeah, because yeah. because I do uh, I do think a lot of PC players just have really shit internet. Mm -hmm. I kind of agree with Nomad, though, that being able to see ping would help because, okay, yeah. so take me, right? Sometimes I don't know if it's just me being a, you know, shitty player or if it's mm. something in game or if it's internet or if it's the other team mm -hmm. or if it's mm -hmm. I, sometimes I just don't know. I have no idea. I'm like, man, maybe I really am that bad. I'm not hitting my mm. shots. And then sometimes I'm like, no, I know I hit my shots there. I I literally shoved my shotgun into his gut how did i do zero damage mm -hmm. but i i if we had some sort of signal to let us know like hey this is not the best lobby or this is not that i feel like that would help a lot um yeah, I, agree. I don't know if i agree call of duty still does this but i remember in the past when you open up like the roster you could see like a no i think it was um counter-strike you could see a number on everybody is like next to everybody's username they would show their their live ping and everything like that so you could see whether mm. or not you're the one who's bugging out or they're the one who's bugging out and i know for maybe most people that be extra information you really just don't need to know but sometimes i, th I think it would give people a little bit more confidence in mm -hmm. whether or not they're improving or it's literally just they're just getting the the butt end of the stick constantly from bad connections where i can always tell is iron banner though iron banner has always mm -hmm. just had the absolute worst connection for me i don't know if y'all agree but for me i be anytime it's around i'm like well time to go into these lobbies where people are going to be you know just i'm desynced constantly yeah. um even people te literally teleporting for me because <laughs> yeah. i'm just like yeah. okay um, that's what baffles yeah. me the most uh, i think is iron banner because that has, that has probably the highest population for it's that supposed time to be period an event. When it's, when it's, it's supposed out. to be something you like know? a fun event that's existed in destiny forever um but yeah anytime i go into iron banner i'm just like i just go in there with knowing that these lobbies might just suck and that's literally all i can do about it there's Always nothing sucks. else yeah um well so this has been an awesome conversation. I hate. I don't want to. I don't want to cut that this off, <laughs> where like without uh, naturally kind of like landing it in. Um, but we do have somebody. Uh, we have Samurai in, uh, who wants to. Who has a question for you guys? We already talked about the maps, by the way. We haven't yet. Did I miss that? We okay. haven't yet. So I'm. I'm going to invite good. Samurai in here, and uh, they should be able to uh, to ask their question here. So, Hello, Samurai. Welcome in. Uh, hello. Hello. Um, How are you today? I'm doing good, thanks. Uh, I've good, been enjoying good. listening in to your podcast. Um, yeah. Hello. Um, Excellent. What's your question? I have three, but um, choose whichever one is the most interesting. <laughs> um, so I'll just quickly <laughs> list them off. Um, so do you think frost armor will become like a new void overshield type annoyance in pvp that's number one i think we uh, the second talked one about that a little bit earlier uh sorry no, you're um good. and then the second one is what well, how do you feel about Kvostov, especially like the ricochet part aspect of it let's do that and one. the <laughs> last one is um do you think there will be a kill cam, uh, like ever in Destiny, mm -hmm. and would it be a good thing or not, and why? If I can touch on the frost armor thing real quick, I yeah. don't think that they're going to. Obviously, it's it's got to maybe be different compared to restoration or cure or or the void over shields. I, I don't think they've publicly announced what exactly it's going to do. I would imagine it might be a damage reduction, right? Uh, well, no, that'd be woven mail. Well, shit, I don't know. D never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's like, what else can they do? I, I, I think it'd be really cool if like enemies' bullets like had a chance to like bounce off of you, 
right? And if it bounced off of you and it hits hit like another enemy, it dealt damage to them instead, right? And then that frost armor slowly falls off the more bullets that like bow, like the mm. bullets that hit you. That I think would be cool. Whether or not it's going to be as effective as uh, Void Overshield, God, I hope not. I hope, <laughs> I really hope not. <laughs> But I, 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 we don't unfortunately know just yet exactly what it's going to do. But I, I think they're conscious enough at this point that they don't want Stasis to be how it was when it released. And they're not going to update it to the point where it's going to get back to that zone instead of just a little bit of a quality of life change. Um, so I don't think we're going to have to worry about it becoming the next Void Overshield, right? Mm -hmm. But I do yeah, think it's going to do something cool, I hope. Hope well, keep in mind too. It could, it could also, and you know, I just don't know enough about this frost armor stuff, so I'm just kind of like ballparking it. But mm -hmm. I think it'd be interesting to see an armor that just resists, uh, like subclass verbs. Okay, yeah. you throw, you throw yeah. weaken at me. You throw yeah. weaken at me. You know what I'm saying? It's not about damage resistance from throwing that smoke bomb at me. But now, you know, I don't get weakened by it. I take the damage, oh, mm -hmm. the normal damage, but I don't get weakened by it. Yeah, you know, I don't get That's unraveled by thought. it. You know um by by this or that so that'll be interesting what a frost um, armor like slowed enemies who are around you in like a meter or two <laughs> i i was no, probably yeah, calling so <laughs> <laughs> no 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 i don't okay, i don't even want right, to okay, i don't right. want to give ideas either please don't okay. don't, don't give them ideas yeah, as far as kabastok uh i think it'll be interesting um it, you know for folks that don't have the context kabastok because kabastok is coming back as an exotic in final mm -hmm. shape um, and the exotic perk uh, is that on every seventh hit, I believe, um, you get like a ricochet on the bullet on the seventh or maybe like it's got to be just only like one bullet or something on every seventh. I don't think it'd be like every bullet after like hits no, wise, but I think it is every seventh. I assume, bullet, like, yeah, I assume it's chaos. every exactly kind of every seventh. Um, I find that kind of like interesting. It depends on what the auto tracking slash like auto aim slash aim assist is on it. Um, uh, I, I never find, you know, crowd control because that's basically a crowd control thing in PvP at the very least. Mm -hmm. um, in PvE, obviously, it's gonna be cool. I'm, I'm totally down with that. But in PvP, um, a crowd control thing that uh, it might not feel the greatest basically when you get hit by it. Uh, but you know, it might be just a tickle too. If if it's only oh. just a tickle. Similar to the rocket. Be that bad. I don't know. The uh, what's the strand auto rifle? The kinetic that you can turn into a strand auto. It's like super quick silver. Quick, uh, yeah, yeah, quick silver. Like how that mm -hmm. rocket is pretty much just free damage. Yeah, right. I, I imagine it's not going to do that much damage. But I mean, the footage that they showed, they showed it bouncing between. I think it was like four enemies, like one That's after correct. another. It was like one, two, three, four, and it was and that was slowed down footage too. So, it's gonna be yeah, it's it's yeah. it's gonna be really situational. Now if it comes back as a 450, here's a here's some maths for everybody. Uh time to kill will be 0 0.87 seconds uh for tier 10 to tier six. Uh seven crits exactly to kill. Um and tier five hundred is six crits, one body. So it will only activate on the final shot of killing someone. So it will only be a problem if there's other people next door. So it's almost like Kinetic tremors, but cooler. Well, that's assuming mm -hmm. that so that person's hitting all headshots, right? Which you'd have to do no, to get sure, the optimal time. That's okay. That's, yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. But I yeah. mean, if it does, uh, I imagine. Hmm, no, I, I wouldn't see. I feel like maybe a lot of this is viable for like lower tier stuff, but not high end anything like high tier. Like kinetic PC. tremors. Yeah, like okay. you're all probably right. not <laughs> no. going to take that into comp. You're probably not <laughs> going to take that into master. Well, activities if it's, I don't know. if it's super tracking it might be useful for those you know one percent situations that that happen especially if that projectile is juiced up if there's some sort of catalyst with kovastov where like with every ricochet that bullet gets more powerful that would be crazy yeah see crazy that's useful. what i was yeah mm -hmm. yeah and then we'd have to see also how some of these new prismatic things are going to assist or how some of mm -hmm. these you know class items are potentially going to assist as well so of course. Um, Did they tell us what affinity so is going to be? Is it going to be kinetic? Is it going to be strand? Is it pretty sure it's going to be kinetic? Pretty sure it's, yeah. it's kinetic. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Normally the bullets would be colored, I think, if it was like strand yeah. have the green traces. Mm -hmm. And the other thing gotcha. is, whenever they've come out with these exotics, don't they usually have like, they have the main exotic ability, but then on the um, mod line, there's like another little thing that they usually have as well. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So we only know about the seventh bullet ricochets, but what does that ricochet do, right? So that's why I'm saying you might be right about mm. it increasing its damage based on how many enemies it jumps between. It tags. That might, you know, who knows? That might be true. Yeah. All right. And what was well, that Sarah, third I think... question? There was three, right? There was um, Frost Armor, there was Kvostov, and then, oh, the Kill Cam, whether mm. or not... Oh, I that doubt that. Like, that sounds I like really quite a bit. That. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that's ever going to be at it. We would amazing, probably but... get new servers before we ever get got a kill <laughs> yeah. cam. Honestly, yeah. I just I, yeah. and honestly, I think it's so unnecessary, especially in things like maybe maybe in like I mean, you can really just go to Guardian Theater if you want it. Yeah. Um, but I feel like Shout when it to comes to Destiny, like like quick play it's kind of really unnecessary because you can see how they killed you and it shows in the feed so you're for the most part like the way our abilities work and the way a lot of our weapons work they they stand out pretty pretty harshly especially if you die to an ability where you know exactly how you died mm -hmm. for the most part um or at least in from, in my opinion i think from from my experience helping people it's it's not that people don't know how they died they just don't know how what they could have done to avoid it and I'm not necessarily sure a kill cam would necessarily be helpful, but I can also see why it would be too. It's about identifying patterns, and you're only really going to see the patterns in your own gameplay by watching the entire bloody yeah. game. A kill, a kill cam is only going to rehash the moment for you and yeah. potentially potentially open up the, the stage for more griefing through through teabagging or emotes or whatever, what have mm. you. Um, so that's there's that angle to consider as well. I don't think it's mm. necessarily too, too helpful. Like, I... I as as a PvP player has gone through COD and Halo and all that, I've never, never cared for a kill cam personally. Um, yeah, I've never have either. If I really want to see something, it's usually because it was something that was so bizarre. I'm like, how did I mm. die? <laughs> um, and usually I'll just we'll get a clip and we go back and look at it. I once died to getting shot once by a literal hand cannon. And I was like, that makes no sense. I went back mm. and looked at it and um I realized that his melee completely desynced. I was hit by a melee. You could see the streak, and then I. Mm. So that's the only time I want to go back and I guess see things. Um, but also different standpoint. I'm not really super concerned. Like I want to be the best. I'm just like I'm just trying to have fun. I'm just yeah. I'm just here to enjoy the yeah. moment. Yeah, the overwhelming majority of folks are. You know, I, I just I don't see. The reason to put dev time into that basically based yeah. on like any sort of like benefit that folks might might see from it what i will say is i'd love to see spectator mode in in private yes. matches though oh, yeah that, that would be, be cool great. that would that be, would be yeah, cool yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah incredible spectator mode doubling as like your theater mode for going i love a free camera through. yeah mm -hmm. a free yeah. camera free camera and private matches would be i could see so much for like both you know for, for editors and content creators but also uh, for what I do as well, you know, it, like and watching people's gameplay and helping them get better at the game. Oh my god, I could just see somebody use it for spectator mode and PMs. We'll watch all of us put Zachary out of a job. Yeah, that <laughs> coaching, like for people trying to coach someone to get better. I've recently yeah. gone into ones and just, um, I was taught to disengage more. Uh, that was the biggest thing because mm -hmm. I really was just W king. Because I, I mean, I, why not, right? It's especially if I'm doing casual gameplay, um, but. You know, sitting in one, somebody was like teaching me to disengage players and how to just realize, hey, you're going to lose this fight. Why are you running in there? Yeah. Um, mm. So I think spectator mode would be fantastic, especially playing with friends and somebody trying to kind of walk you through small stuff where it's not mm -hmm. heavy criticism, but just kind of walk you through little steps. Hey, this is going to make you a better player. And the only thing you have to do is stop running in like a little crazy person. That's, that's pretty yeah. much it. Madness. I think Nox Diver, I was on this wavelength and then I saw, saw Nox Diver say this. Uh, he says, give us camera mode for PvE. I actually think the kill cam would be better used in raids. And I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> people often go, I don't know what just killed me. I don't know. What did, how did they get that angle? And it would show you exactly <laughs> why. Vandal kill cam? <laughs> yeah. It would show like, you exactly like how. Across the map? <laughs> yeah. Again, oh god, Rolk, you kill Cam of his fucking just kicking you. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um It'd be amazing. Outside, outside of that, we do have a couple more questions. Um, and then we'll we'll get this all wrapped up. Samurai, thank you so much for your question. Uh your questions. And uh I, I hope you've had fun here today. Um 
Evil Villain asks, in the grand scheme of things, do the Trials players want Counter-Strike and Destiny? No supers, no shields, no special? Just jumps in primary? No, no. don't listen to Twitter. I don't think so. <laughs> I think there's, that takes like, away the, from the game. There, There is obviously a very, very proud, hardcore subset of players who run scrim rule sets that ban everything, and that's the way they enjoy the game, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, to be honest. But the overwhelming majority of trials players just want the, the bullshit to be taken addressed, mm -hmm. like the wells and the bubbles and the overshields. I don't think anybody's ever argued against abilities existing, just their prevalence of them. I think going back to something I remember Bungie bringing up is your super was supposed to be that like, hey, we're down by four games and we need to start getting up there. We need to catch up. I think it was supposed to be that like heroic thing that you could throw mm. out there and potentially bring your games back up. Taking away abilities, I feel like would take away from the game and the big enjoyment of being able to have that 1v3 moment in the game that makes mm. you feel like, oh, I did it. I did something and my team can win. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, gunplay in Destiny has always been one of my favorites, but at the same time, like I don't want to actually take away the excitement of, having your ability mm -hmm. really help you out. Um, and I don't think I've ever heard that playing with PVP players fairly often, um, people that just dedicate their time to trials, none of them have ever said like, oh, take away all abilities. I've, I've mm -hmm. never heard that. Yeah, that's just people on Twitter, honestly. I'm gonna go ahead and just say it straight up. Har hardware is hella boring. I, yeah, uh, hard I, I, like, I did hella a couple boring. matches of it and I was like, this is cool for like maybe one or two games, but then I want to go back the and the control it. just so I can like yeah. have all everything all at once. Yeah, I, uh, I'm, so, I really, I'm, so, I'm sorry, but hardware is boring. It's, it's a godsend for weapon reviewers, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm I'm sure. Really <laughs> <laughs> well, is it is it more fun or more boring than Mayhem? No, bo it's oh. boring. Boring. Gotcha. Boring. Mayhem yeah. is really just a go in there and just Chaos. do whatever you want. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, I use yeah. stuff in there that makes no sense. Just go in there and it's a free for all. The way, um, that, <laughs> the way that I explain hardware is it's just like, especially, you know, coming from, you know, like, you know, like whatever area of the higher end of like the skill spectrum that I'm at. Um, it's like, uh, like you're used to and you've become accustomed to tracking. 20 different variables right you go into hardware you're tracking three i fall asleep <laughs> you know there's just yeah. like it's just gunplay my gunplay is that's the thing i've always focused on the most but it's fun to be able to be able to make those hero moments to you know with your abilities in conjunction in synergy with um your uh, your gunplay um, and also tracking what the enemy is doing with their abilities as well um, and having something to counter that. Um, it, it's fun to play those games, those mind games yeah. uh, with the with your opponents. And when I'm only tracking just gunplay, of which I already have focused on the most, it's just like I go in, I get 20, 30, 40 kills, and then I go back to regular Crucible because... It's more interesting. Mm -hmm. well, the game was never based on just weapons either. So you're used yeah. to uh, enjoying building and spending a lot of time crafting these farming for exotics and trying to get the best armor or whatever possible um, to have these things. So it, it just, I don't know, it just feels the, as much as I like the gunplay, it's just, it's there. there's more to destiny than that. Most the definitely. Cocktail. If I wanted to play COD, I'd just go play, I'd just go play COD. Well, well, even with COD, like you have kill streaks to worry about. You have your your abilities in your grenade and your claymore or whatever you're using. You have, but but even though that's more gunplay first, they have an instant, near instant TTK. So you're never too, like there's a there's a lot of thought in placement and positioning. It's it's actually fairly tactical at the higher ends. Um, mm. And if you wanted to play that, but 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 that's not comparable to Destiny because Destiny is a little bit slower. The only thing that mm -hmm. is somewhat comparable to Destiny in terms of its formula is, in a way, Halo. But then Halo is a much slower TTK, and then you're always also getting different weapons, power-ups, and stuff on the field. So there's so mm. much more going on, and the gameplay is enhanced by the abilities on on the field. And with Destiny, there's no nothing to to replace that that ability 
formula or that that part of the formula which abilities take up like the mm. cocktail of destiny pvp which is what everybody's so addicted to involves abilities in some way shape or form and when we do complain about about abilities we just say that the abilities just take a bit too much of, of the formula it's a bit too mm. concentrated and we're yep. just asking to dilute it down a little bit not take it away entirely but that being said i mean i'm still addicted to this game because of gunplay i personally really enjoy hardware but i also don't play it for extended periods of time mm. because it is boring I mean, if you really wanted to, I guess you could go into scrim, like a scrims lobby. Honestly, go sure. into a scrims lobby because, um, I mean, that's the individuality of Destiny. That's why we are all addicted. That's why we've mm-hmm. been playing this game for ten years. The combination of the gunplay and the abilities has always made this game stand out for me. As many yeah. games as I've played and tried out, oh, I'm stuck. Sometimes I'm mm. so stuck, and a lot of people will be like, "Oh, well, if you don't like it, quit complaining." I'm like, "I'm complaining because I love this game." There's no yeah, other, definitely. I'm complaining because I love it. I'm complaining because I want to play it. I just, you know, more tweaking. I I will say more tweaking. Just, you know, even if I hate it for a moment, that's fine. If I just see them trying and making all these changes as often as possible, I can't really complain too much. I just, oh, well. I just want to see more tweaking in the game. Well, tweak with intention, tweak with direction, most definitely. I don't yes. want it to be directionless. I know you weren't assuming or, you know, saying oh, well, that, yeah, but I yeah. just want to make good direction. that point. Listen to yeah. players, listen to your high tier players too, because I think, especially with content creators, we, we're not just talking for ourselves, we talk for entire communities. That's um, true. We do try to listen. I think that's listen. something that a lot of people miss is that, you know, I'm not, whenever I make a suggestion, you know, it isn't most times it isn't just coming from me. It's 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 been filtered through like a bunch of other feedback that I've had um, while I stream my 40, 50 hours a week on Twitch, you know, while I, you know, hear from my community, you know, on Twitter or whatever else. I refuse to call it X. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think that's something that folks miss. People always see a content creator. It's just a content creator. It's just that one person. But it really mm-hmm. is, you know, see like a lot of Reddit feedback lot. coming coming from our communities filled with idiots yeah though. you see it yeah. but you see the thing is the masses you see it on reddit and you see it on twitter a lot where people will be like oh well this content creator made these suggestions we're not just speaking for ourselves because i'm not the expert pvp player but i do play yeah. with people that can give me better insight i will never just speak for myself i can give my opinion as much as i want to but it Tony's right. It's been filtered through quite a bit of people, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Reddit, whether it's my community, whether it's my Discord. It There's just so many people that that opinion has already gone through and potentially changed, even if almost it's de- in the oh, slightest. Almost always, yeah. been, almost always changed in my, in my experience. You know, I'll say something and it might be off the cuff or something like that. And two or three different people who are quite knowledgeable, get, give their own experience or whatnot, um, will end up, you know, modifying that. Uh, and by the time it ends up getting to the wider masses where I might actually make a statement about it or give that, you know, feedback to a dev or something like that, um, it's gone through, you know, at least a few different revisions. Yeah. So I think that's something that uh, is important for folks to remember about, you know, most, I would say most uh, content creators, especially the established ones in our community here. I also try to remember that our experience for gameplay is going to be very different from the average player. Yeah. Mostly because we're going to be playing with people that put in hundreds of hours into the game um especially if you know they're sitting in our stream watching stuff they're sitting in other people's stream watching stuff they're listening to other things they're playing the game as much as we are i try to remember that my experience compared to the average actual average player is going to be entirely different so where i might feel oh this isn't too bad the average player might say this is awful i i don't want to play this like Mm -hmm. i'm having a horrible time i don't have anyone to help me how do I get in a raid team? I don't have people to do GMs with. So I do try to remember that. The average experience for us is not probably not the average experience in general. Yeah. 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 We are exceptional. We are exceptions to the rule, not the rule in that in that case. Yep. Yeah, we're exceptional. We're better than everyone. <laughs> crazy we're crazy. exceptionally dumb good, 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 good backtrack on that word <laughs> you caught yourself you're like oh i shouldn't say that out loud yeah yeah i shouldn't say it. yeah, yeah. um so uh, the quiet I'm, gonna, out loud. I'm gonna ask one last question here uh, and then we can quickly be... say what's up with the maps too by the way yeah yeah, yeah. if that's okay uh, and then quickly. it's not gonna it, it's not gonna be uh john martini's question about uh What's the best question? What's the best weapon in the current Crucible meta, and why is it the hung jury? It's not going to be that one. 
Uh, we know who that is. I don't know, yeah, man. We know Mark's who breathing is. slaps. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Icicle AI is asking uh, for everyone on the call, if you had to delete one weapon perk in PvP, what would it be? Oh, shoot. Um, one weapon perk. Just get good. One, one weapon perk in <laughs> PvP. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Explosive payload. Explosive payload is pretty high. Yeah, up I agree. Uh, 100% yeah. agree. 100% yeah. agree. Yeah. Training wheels on hand cannons. I'll keep on saying it. You know, I understand as if people want to extend explosive. their range out a little bit or whatever, but training wheels. As much as I off. love explosive payload, I, I think it's a great perk to have. Uh, it sucks to play against. It really does. Um, mm. It feels like garbage. Um, and as you said earlier, the snipers, they're not there. Why? Almost every single hand cannon you see in the game right now does have explosive payload. Um, if they're not running it, um, it that's preference, but... Is it better? A lot of the times I think yes. Um, you get that extra pop of damage sometimes, depending on what your game is looking like. Um, not only that, the flinch is just so intense that whether even if you're at range, like it might screw up your gameplay in that moment. It sucks, honestly. There's like two weapons that I constantly run into now that are the bane of like any weapon that I try using and that's <laughs> mostly because I'm trying to learn about managing recoil and mouse and keyboard because I'm new to this but um that is 100% rose with explosive payload and ace of spades ace of spades Ooh. for some reason I notice has a ridiculous amount of flinch it deals always for a weapon that yep. doesn't have explosive payload it's got high it's got it like that and uh Mida. Something the thing about is, they're, Ace they're is coded high cow. Yeah. Oh, can, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. They have high cow. They have high cow. I think no, but see, that's what makes flinch, it that special. That that's fair. Uh, that's the point. Well, I think like there has to be some different exotic something. perks. Does it also have to have the ability to send your view into God? Like, I don't. <laughs> yes, because it's a scout do. rifle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. For me, I I don't mind exotics feeling like exotics. Uh, my my bigger issue is going into a lobby. Uh, where everyone has rows with explosive and I feel like any gunfight I'm getting into is just a little nonsensical because my screen is yeah. going everywhere. Yeah, most definitely. Most um, definitely. And so I feel like that's... that's do you play You play on console, Angelica? Or P or no, PC? I'm on PC with MNK. Okay. okay. Gotcha. So for me, the flinch you... is a little no, it's, it's, aggressive some days. It's frustrating. I agree. You could BM them with Luminarch and just say, I'll teach you. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you see that, that smile? No. He said, I'll teach you. No. I'll, uh, this no, dude I'm is not. a menace. Uh, I'm usually afraid bow players, glaive players, GL players. Anytime I get into the lobby with them, I'm like, yeah, this is, is going to be so fun. Bow players are actually the most... They just don't care. I mean, they challenge anything. They challenge everything and anything. It doesn't amazing. matter. You might have... They might have heavy. It doesn't matter. But the person will... The bow player will still... Pretty much challenge anything and everything, and that's a little scary. Hey, bow player in this chat, how do you feel about these comments? No comment. Mm -hmm. No comment? Okay. Actually, admittingly, ever since they changed how precision frame bows work and you can no longer one-shot headshot with times five swashbuckler, I've actually moved off of bows. I can't lie. Mostly the only reason I used it was because how much fun it was to be able to combine it with Shade Binder and Frost Pulse and get the melee kills and get the headshots and get the five seconds one-shot headshot to your 10. It was amazing. Now you can't do that anymore. And so it's like, um, I've been trying stadia to find time out. Stadia time I'm out. <laughs> God, I, st I still feel like bow players are really just, they will literally challenge anything and it's a little terrifying. We have terrifying. problems, I agree. Yeah, it's a little terrifying. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying y'all scare me as much as Glaive people do. <laughs> I, when, I, when I'm running Glaive in the Crucible, it's just because I don't know what else to run. And so it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of fun just running up to people just stabbing. Just, all you got to do stabbing. is stab. Just, just keep stabbing. stabbing. Glaive on Titan with ACD feedback. Uh, mm -hmm. is it ACD feedback fans? Yeah, and PvP. I ran into that in uh in the new territory 3v3 game mode the other day, and my teammates just <laughs> kept on getting deleted left yeah. and right. And then I was like, what is no, happening to you guys? And I got around. in one engagement yep. with the guy in melee range and I got blown away instantly. And I was like, oh, I see. <laughs> I want <laughs> ACDC why. feedbacks to like literally never change for yeah. real. Like I say, uh, quint there's certain exotics mm -hmm. on Titan that are just quintessential titan identity exotics and that is one of them and i will never be a proponent of of removing that from them man i, I think it's so awesome whenever i, I see also it. don't think Hilarious. they're too they're like too strong 
I think yeah, they're, no, I think they're well balanced. <laughs> now, occasionally you will pull off something so obscene that you're like, what did I just do? But mm-hmm. for the most part, I think they're, they're okay. They're, I don't, yeah. I don't have an issue with them. Yeah. And they're, they're just, yeah. just like, like, you know, Nomad was talking about earlier, like, uh, you can, it, it it's easily you can easily telegraph that too. You can easily d- like discern. Oh, I see ACDC feedbacks. I understand what I don't need to do, <laughs> you know, against that player um, mm-hmm. very very quickly. To make better choices, yeah. Exactly, make better choices against that. You know, some exotics aren't as easily to as easy to read um, and therefore counter. But I feel like yeah. you know whether you're able to 100% counter or not, you at least understand what you shouldn't be doing, and that is getting into fisticuffs with that particularly unhinged individual. Yeah. Stab you once, shame on you. Stab me mm. twice. Mm. Shame <laughs> on me. Time glaives out. Shame on me. You well, right. Going back to uh, Times' comment about using glaives in the new PV, the new three man PvP uh, playlist. How are you guys enjoying the new maps that just dropped last? Give week? us. How about how about this? Everybody, okay. give your rankings one, two, and three. Nomad, start. Serious dissonance, even tied. Time? I think it actually goes for me, even tied uh, the, the Neo Muna one and then dissonance. I think for me, it heavily depends on if I'm doing threes or sixes. Um, but I, I agree with Nomad's take. I, I, I do. It's going to be Serious dissonance, and then even tides. I, I just I can't get the hang of even tied. There's too many holes everywhere. And I, I don't like there's it. There's a there's a pacing to even tide that I've many of my community members have mentioned and also like I've noticed that is just very very fast. Very fast. Yeah. So I want to um, qualify my take is that I think if you, if if it was a scale of 1 to 10, they would be within 0.5 of each other. Like I think they're all excellent. I agree mm-hmm. with that. I agree with that. Yeah. I think um I put uh I'll go a little bit farther and if we go by like a tier system, uh it's for me by the way it's serious barely over even tide and then dissonance um, i'm still trying to trying to get the hang of dissonance those angles are funky mm-hmm. on dissonance especially at high level. Was i've to play those angles sixes. no i i it liked is, it in it's sixes interesting. it's I chaotic i love it in threes um in dissonance i i love that chaos in, in sixes though you can three, find really yeah, good goes, angles it is very um, challenging in threes which is in, a good thing by the way well, and everywhere it's too you large stand for on threes th- Oh, well, my problem with the map is everywhere you stand on distance, it feels like there's five other angles that yeah. can peek on you. Yeah, and I you don't have that. any yep. cover whatsoever. No choice. It's tough. You got to move. You got to move. Would, that that game fair, sense has to be high. And you got to watch that. Uh, you got to watch that. Uh, that TV video where he's talking about the angles and where you can actually get like peaks from and get peaked from. You know what I, I think? That was the a map looks video. so similar that you can get just mixed up where you are. Right, mm, it's like true. the other and maps yet, just have very yet, clear colors and 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 angles that you're like, oh, I recognize what that is just based off the shape of that thing and the angle of that. But yeah. dissonance and 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 disjunction because of the the whole darkness and and mix with light mm. kind of theme they have going on, it's just the same color all the way through. Yeah, I think if you, you did know, a color map, it'd just be black and gray. And it's I like where am to, I? I try it to literally reminds me of like a yin exists, yang. Honestly. That's yeah. what it looks like to me. Like dissonance feels like a it like it's it's literally like a yin yang, you know, like graphic. That's what dissonance feels like to me. And then like it's confusing sometimes because it looks it looks symmetrical, but you know, like you get better angles sometimes, a lot of times from like or just objectively, you get better angles uh from certain sides. You have certain advantages from certain sides. So that's why it's important on that map in particular, if you want to play it, especially in a competitive sense, to you you gotta learn that map. You gotta learn that map. Uh, you actually gotta like dig hard. into it. it it's yeah. gonna be such a chaotic scrim map. It's gonna be like I'm, it's, I'm it's tough. I've been playing. I've been playing scrims on it the last it like week. On the threes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I could appreciate it as well. For me, it still is like Sirius is the most interesting map. I feel like, or the, at least the most different, yeah. um, an interesting map that we have in Destiny Two. Like, period. It's um, cool, I can't but wait I feel for like that there's to come a up lot of trials. dead zones. There really yeah, is there a lot of dead zones. I don't like that, and I wish. I hate to say this, but I wish Bungie would stop doing that. There's just so many areas in the back of the map. You can literally either go hide or just go sit there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I started exploring the map. That makes a really interesting ability to, like, break line of sight and to pull people and bait people into Mm -hmm. situations that are not necessarily the best for them. Um, I I think it's going to be super interesting in trials because people are going to be going into these what you call dead zones. And what I I don't necessarily consider that. I just feel like it's an area where you can try to find some sort of an advantage. Um, especially in like a Quiet like zones, a mismatch. 
quiet zone. I, would, I could dig with that. Yeah. I would yeah. like to see Destiny make so, like slightly smaller maps, I think. Um, and force engagements a little bit faster. Um, because if you really want to sit in the back and sit with a scout, I mean, granted, you can change your weapons, right? And try to counter it. But for me, that just gets so boring sometimes. Mm -hmm. I would like to see mm -hmm. slightly smaller maps and add these big ones too. That's fine. But mm -hmm. maps where you can get into engagements just a little bit faster so I don't sit there in a PvP match that goes to time. That mm -hmm. that to me gets mm -hmm. just But is it isn't that and I'll be the devil's advocate, isn't that even tied though? Even tied yeah. is hella small. Yeah, like the really only small. thing about even tied that I might I don't like you that it's not even. It. it feels so uneven, like it's both sides. Yeah. I, I don't know. For me, like yeah. in the middle area feels okay, I guess, where that like I don't even know the eyeball is. Mm -hmm. That feels okay. Um I just don't like that middle ground. That middle ground mm. to me feels so strange with all the gaps everywhere. Maybe that's mm. part of learning it. Maybe that that really is um, part of like, I need to learn the map and the angles, but I don't know. It, just, it doesn't could, feel good. If I could add real quick, the reason why what's the map on Neomuna called again? What is it like Cirrus, Cirrus Plaza? Cirrus, Cirrus Plaza. Plaza? Mm -hmm. Plaza. Um, the reason why that one for me scores below um, Eventide, and it's it's literally like probably the dumbest reason why, but it just is the reason why. Um, when I did the 3v3 game mode, one of the game modes was to capture a flag. Like you have to capture a flag, your points go oh, yeah. up as long as you hold that flag. The only reason that scores below for me is because one of the sides um, of the map has that big glass wall. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like the yep. it's a big old wall that's 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 glass. Um, when you're standing on the middle platform where the heavy spawns, like, you know, there's like the, there's, it's like the little gap and then there's, um, two kind of elevators walls. you can stay on top of them. Yeah. I, would you call them elevators? So like in, in the very yeah. middle of the map. Yeah. Right. Yep. Elevators. And you look down towards that glass wall. There's no central break in it. It's just one huge glass wall. So the only way to get into an engagement behind it is to go into the tiny opening on the right and the tiny opening on the left or die jumping way over it. And oh, the, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. And, yeah. And the flag at one point spawned right in the middle of that back zone, which means yeah. that if you're trying it's to get an right angle the on it, chandelier. Yeah, exactly. So if you were trying to get an angle on it or whatever, and you were standing on that middle platform, you had to put yourself in those two tight engage like corners where you're pretty much going to die if you have multiple people shooting you. And I, I wish that glass opening just had like, uh, or that glass wall just had a little slit that was just cut out from the center of it that way you can see the flag area from there if you're standing mm. exposing yourself on that top platform keep the glass mm. wall covering a huge portion of it but keep that little like two three meter opening right that goes uh, goes through the middle so you actually can see that from the center but maybe some people like that maybe some people like there being a zone that forces super tight engagements but that's mm. the one thing that frustrated me about that map is just too big that, that glass wall was just too big I thought. I see your point. I see your point. All right. Well, folks, I think those are all the questions fit to print. Thank you all so much for being here. And thanks to everybody on Twitch for, for watching this. Um, why don't we go around the cube and tell people where they can find you on the internet, uh, starting with Ascendant Nomad. You can find me over on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitch. Six, 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 six or whatever the hell um but uh prefer twitch and youtube stadia time what about you all right well you can also find me on twix x x -ter and uh twitch as well under <laughs> stadia time and then hopefully if anybody ends up going to uh to gcx this year i should be going as well come up to me sign my goddamn helmet all right Sign my the name's helmet. on there somewhere. My name's Sign on the there helmet. somewhere. <laughs> I think it's in the it's on the back side of here, but yeah. Yeah, no, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Oh yeah. yeah. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It was a pleasure to have you. Uh Tony, what about you? Uh yeah, you can find me uh mostly on Twitch and of course on Twitter and in the Discord, all ill physics. Every once in a while on a blue moon, I might drop something on uh YouTube, also ill physics. Um, and then, you know, on other platforms, I've got my link tree in the bio on Twitter, uh, so you can like catch it there, but, uh, you know, it's illus physics in, in, in some places, but all the major ones are, are ill physics, uh, but the link tree is there and you can of course find my links, uh, on Twitch as well. So, yeah. Heck yeah. And Helica for the win. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that I got your name wrong. That is <laughs> earlier. That is okay. Was that it, is oh, okay. Helica? 
It is. is. The G- um, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Of, I was saying Angelica. I have, understood. No. I've kind of just accepted it. Um, Dan. Just oh, say, call me whatever you want. Now. It's fine. I was. Just call I've me been Dan. I was Dan Flannelty on Twitter for a very long time. So <laughs> well, I don't understand. <laughs> understand. But yes. Um, so what about you? Where can people find you on the internet? And Helica FTW, pretty much on everything. Uh, Twitch and Twitter mostly. Although my Twitter is mostly just trolling and garbage. So <laughs> <laughs> good luck. <laughs> But mostly Twitch. <laughs>